Only two games remain in the regular season and there's a lot at stake as the Amarillo Wranglers host the Colorado Grit in the second game of a two game set. Hi everybody, Guy Carenza here as we welcome you inside the Budweiser bullpen right at the heart of the Texas Panhandle for what should be a fun filled affair between two South Division opponents. For Colorado, the season is all but over. Home ice advantage in the play-in round. And as of yesterday, we do know and we can confirm that the Wranglers will meet the New Mexico Ice Wolves in the play-in round of the Robertson Cup playoffs. The only question is, is where will that potential three game set be played? Here's the lowdown. If New Mexico beats Oklahoma in any fashion tonight, then the Ice Wolves will host the play-in series against the Wranglers and Amarillo heads to Albuquerque next week for the play-in. However, if New Mexico is to fall to Oklahoma in any fashion to for the Wranglers to have the potential jump to move into the fourth seed of the South Division with a two-game sweep here in the final two games of the regular season over Colorado, that would put the Wranglers in fourth place in the division, and that would be good enough for Amarillo to host the play-in series here in Amarillo. So that's what's at stake here tonight, as it's the 11th meeting of the season between the Wranglers and the Grip. Wranglers enter play with a record of 31-19-6-2. They have 70 points on this season. They currently sit at fifth place in the South Division. For Colorado, it's not been a really good year so far. Long 10-game losing skid. Last time out, the Wranglers defeated the Grit 4-3 yesterday, Friday night here in this building. Colorado jumped out to an early 2-0 lead thanks to goals from Landon West and Braden Junker in the game's first three minutes. But the Wranglers slowly crawled their way back into the game, built some momentum, and ended up getting three straight goals. First coming from Jack McDonald. Then the Wranglers got goals from Magnus Gadowski, his first as a Wrangler. Then Jack Ivey made it 3-2 Wranglers. But Colorado said, hold your horses, we're not done yet. We're not ready to call it. A Launched a one-time missile from the right circle to beat Jack Erickson and give the Wranglers the win 4-3. As Ben and Jack Ivey each had the same stat line, one goal and one assist in the affair. For Jack Ivey, it was his 14th multi-point game this season. That ties him with Roman Zapp for the team lead with 14 multi-point games on the season. And for Ben Ivey, as his game-winning goal on the power play lifted the Wranglers to victory, Nolan Gagnon had two assists. He leads the team in that category with 33 on the season. Jack McDonald has a goal, has excuse me, a point in every single game against Colorado this season. Watch out for him tonight as he's been red hot for the Wranglers over his last couple of games. As McDonald has nine goals and 11 assists in 10 games against Colorado. He also has three goals and four assists in his last six games. Connor McDonough settled into the game nicely after Colorado jumped out to the two nothing lead. McDonough's stat line ended with 23 saves on 26 shots for his 26th victory of the season. That ties him for second amongst goaltenders in the North American Hockey League. For Colorado, Jack Erickson got the start yesterday. He'll get the start again tonight. Erickson stopped 25 of 29 shots for Colorado. It was a large part as to why Colorado uh, was able to make things difficult for the Wranglers yesterday. We talked about Sheldon Rue getting his goal. He's the youngest player in the North American Hockey League at just 16 years of age. He's set to turn 17 next month. He's turned out to be a pretty good pickup for Colorado. And Braden Junker got his first goal of the season. Landon West scored on the power play. Watch for Landon West here tonight. He has three goals and five assists in ten games against Amarillo in the season series. So it seems like Colorado has relied on Landon West when they need a goal. They've also relied on Noah Grolnick, who's the leading point scorer for the Colorado grip. As Grolnick has 17 goals and 18 assists for 35 points in 58 games. As he split the season with the Chippewa Steel and the Colorado grip. Ever since he came over to Colorado, he's been a pretty good addition for them. Watch for Grolnick here tonight as he is on a line with Landon West and George Poirier. That brings us to our keys of the game presented by Street Toyota. As the Wranglers look to secure their third straight victory and look to pick up some momentum down the stretch heading into their playoff matchup against the New Mexico Ice Wolves. And I think the first key for the Wranglers tonight is you can't look past Colorado. We learned that yesterday. The grit really from the get-go last night came out, made a statement, said, hey, we're here to play. And I think it's tough when a losing team comes into your building late in the season. Uh, you know, a lot of teams that are in Colorado's position would just pack it up and say, well, let's just call it a year. Let's just uh, get to the summer break and uh, we'll see each other next season. Um, that it really isn't the case 
wasn't the case for Colorado last night. They came bursting out of the gate saying, hey, no, we're here to play. You got a lot of guys on that roster that are making a case as to why they should be on the roster uh, next season. So Colorado had the jump uh, from the start yesterday. Wranglers need to be aware that Colorado's not going to back down. The Wranglers do still have something to play for. And so Wranglers need to bring their A game here tonight, not look past their opponent. Second on the list is the Wranglers have to stay aggressive on the forecheck. I thought that was something that Amarillo did really well uh, in their victory yesterday as they were wreaking havoc in the Colorado zone, forcing the grit into making ill-advised turnovers. And so if the Wranglers can stay aggressive on the forecheck, which is something that they've done really well all season long, then they should be in good shape here tonight. As it is senior night, Connor McDonough made his lap around the ice. McDonough has become a legend around these parts. Tonight he will start in his 50th game of the season. He shouldered a heavy workload for the Wranglers, but he's been excellent. Now Kyle DeMarco will make his lap. Longtime Wranglers defenseman. He's actually playing in his 175th North American Hockey League game tonight. Kyle DeMarco is a staple of Wranglers hockey ever since the inaugural season. In fact, he's the only player remaining from the inaugural roster. And his 175 games are tied for the most out of anyone since he entered the league back in 2021-2022. Certainly been a treat to have Kyle DeMarco on the club since the club's inception. We wish him nothing but the best in his future. As he gets a standing ovation from those who have found their seats already. A lot of packed people on the concourse right now. Next up is number three, Nick Troutwine. Now Troutwine has been with the Wranglers for about half a season. Came over from the Minnesota Wilderness in a trade on December 1st. And he's been very impressive and it did not take long for him to make his mark on this team. And Troutwine has been everything you'd want from a defenseman. Making smart decisions with the puck, blocking shots, giving the team a solid defensive performance, night in and night out. Just 33 games with the Wranglers. Nick has scored one goal and eight assists. So that's been an excellent pickup from general manager and president of hockey operations, Harry Mahood. As Nick Troutwine has found a home on the Wranglers top D pairing with number 19, Nolan Gagnon. Troutwine gets his standing ovation. Round of applause from the Budweiser bullpen faithful. Happy to have Nick on the squad. Again, wish him nothing but the best in the future. Next up for the Wranglers, the captain, number four, Ben Ivey. What more can you say about this guy? He came up clutch last night. He's played in over 100 games with the Wranglers. And every single one of them, he's made an impact. And ben has not only given the Wranglers consistent offense and production with 32 goals and 56 assists in his two North American Hockey League seasons with the Wranglers, but he also brings a lot of on and off the ice leadership as well. And we saw him with the A on his sweater last season. He got the C put on his sweater this year as the Wranglers captain. He's done a good job leading this squad. As he's committed to play NCAA Division I hockey for Army West Point next season. As Ben makes his full lap around the rink. And again, standing ovation at a loud round of applause. The best part about those Ivy brothers is not just one, there's two of them. It's now Jack Ivy will make his lap around the ice. And to say that Jack Ivy has been impressive this season is an understatement. There really aren't words to describe the season that Jack Ivy is having. As he's topped his rookie campaign where he scored 12 goals and 15 assists in 60 games. With a stellar sophomore campaign where he has netted 31 goals and 19 assists in 56 games, he leads the team with 50 points right now, his breakout season has written his name in the history books as he became just the second Wrangler ever to score 30 goals in a season. He's able to skate alongside his twin brother Ben in his 100th North American Hockey League game. And the stop doesn't end here as they will play together at Army West Point next season, NCAA Division I hockey. I'm excited to see what their future holds. I'm happy that I was able to tell a part of their story here in Amarillo.
Next up is Luke Morris. He's become a fan favorite around these parts, not just because of his hard-nosed style of play. He's not afraid to get into the nitty-gritty. We've seen him throw some punches from time to time, and that's just Luke Morris. If you've ever had a chance to meet him, you know what kind of guy he is. He's a special one. It'll be sad to see him go. As Morris was acquired from the Rhinos through a trade last season, left his mark here on the Wranglers in his season and a half. Has an upbeat attitude off the ice. Determined. A very hard-nosed style of play on it. Morris skated in his 100th North American Hockey League game early this year and has had his best season so far with 10 goals and 7 assists on the campaign. Luke Morris, ladies and gentlemen. Up next, number 14, Magnus Godowski. Now, Magnus hasn't been with the Wranglers very long, but he has quickly become a fan favorite around these parts because he's just an all-around great guy. Magnus Godowski always walks into the building with a smile on his face. He's already played just 11 games with the Wranglers. Scored his first goal in the Wrangler uniform last night as he came over in a trade at the trade deadline from the Maryland Black Bears. And again, he's become a fan favorite, not just because of his personality, but because of his high hockey IQ, his determined work ethic, and it's just a charming personality, as we said before. Magnus has skated in 76 games in two seasons between the Wranglers and the Black Bears. And he's committed to play NCAA Division III hockey at Amherst College next season. So it's been a treat to have Magnus on the Wranglers this season, and my only regret is that he, wasn't, he didn't get here sooner. Next up, the fantastic Finn himself. It's Dopey Buikinen. And if you look for clutch in the dictionary, you're going to find Topi's name. Leads the team with six game-winning goals. And he's been as clutch and consistent as can be since signing a tender with the Wranglers in the offseason. As the finish forward has been amazing for Amarillo in his first campaign playing overseas. Scoring 24 goals, 22 assists in 58 games this season. As Buikinen is strong on the puck, always a lethal scoring threat. He leads the team with six game-winning goals. Topi Buikinen has been one of the Biggest surprises of this season, and a welcome one at that, as he's been absolutely awesome. As he makes his lap. And again, just like everyone else, standing ovation, loud applause. Up next down the tunnel, number 19, Nolan Gagnon with the A on his sweater. As soon as I saw this guy in training camp in the preseason, I knew he was going to be something special, and the coaches knew that too. They bestowed the A on his sweater. He's a leader on and off the ice. He's just been great. An excellent puck-moving defenseman for the Wranglers, scoring eight goals and 33 assists. His 33 assists lead the club in 56 games in his rookie campaign. Gagnon has been stellar for the Wranglers, and not just providing offense from the back end, but providing steady defense as well. In fact, in the month of January, Gagnon was named the league's defenseman of the month, where he scored four goals and nine assists with a plus nine rating. He will play his NCAA college hockey, Division I, at the University of Alaska, Anchorage. Ladies and gentlemen, number 19, Nolan Gagnon. Next up, the ever so versatile number 89. We call him a Swiss Army knife, but he's a German. So I guess you call him a German Army knife, as he's just been good in every asset of the game. You need him to win a face-off drop, he'll do it. You need him to score a clutch goal, you can do that too. You need him to be consistent and steady on the back check, and provide a good defensive play, you can do that as well. You need him to provide you with a Excellent passing play to set up a goal. Roman Zapp's your guy. Zapp is having a breakout campaign. It's 16 goals and 29 assists for the team leading plus 14 rating. He's just been reliable in every facet of the game this season. I'm excited to see what his future holds. He leads the team with 14 multi-point games this year. Roman Zapp has been excellent. Last up, because we're going in numerical order, it's number 93, Jack McDonald. This season, it's been a full-fledged Mac attack. 
As Jack McDonald plays the game at a fast pace while maintaining a high sense of awareness and ability to make plays happen. He's played in over 100 games with the Wranglers over the last two seasons and has showcased his ability to score and generate scoring chances with 27 goals and 55 assists in the North American Hockey League. McDonald's 55 career assists are the second most in Wranglers franchise history. He's been great this season with 13 goals and 31 assists in 58 games. Jack McDonald, the last senior out of the tunnel. A lot of seniors for the Wranglers this season, 11 of them to be exact. And every single one of them being recognized here tonight with a standing ovation and a big round of applause. And one last time, every fan gets up on their feet if they're able. And they get real loud for the Amarillo Wranglers. Touching moment here at the Budweiser bullpen. Shaping up to be a great crowd here. Not a lot of empty seats. And we're getting ready for first period puck drop here at the Budweiser bullpen. Officials make their way out to the ice. Three-man officiating crew led by Mr. Baker. One referee, two linesmen, same crew that we had from yesterday, and I assume that we'll be back for tomorrow in the season series finale, in the regular season finale at that. As the Colorado Grip make their way out of the tunnel, wearing, led by goaltender Jack Erickson, who gets the start between the pipes as we get to our starting lineups. As the starting lineup for the Colorado Grit, number seven, Braden Freifogel starts at left wing. Freifogel stands at 5'10", 175 pounds. And he has five goals and 12 assists in 56 games this season. Down the middle will be number 18, Lucas Mann, youngster in the Colorado lineup from Woodbury, Minnesota. And as he stands at 6'2", 165 pounds. Mann in his short career has one goal and two assists for three points in eight games. His first career goal came against the Wranglers in the set on St. Patrick's Day weekend. To his right will be number 94, Christian Carter, the native of Littleton, Colorado. Picked up his first point in the season series with an assist yesterday. On the blue line, number four, Bowen Burke will be paired up with number 27, Will Hadrick. Watch out for Bowen Burke as he can move the puck with good vision. Burke has seven goals and 19 assists for 26 points in 58 games. He leads all Colorado D-men in points this season. And in goal, it'll be number one, Jack Erickson. We saw him yesterday, we'll see him again today. Erickson will be making his 37th appearance between the pipes for Colorado. He has a record of 9-22, 2-0, a 4.08 goals against average, an 8.76 save percentage, and one shutout on the season. Yesterday, he stopped 25 of 29 shots in a 4-3 loss to these Wranglers. So that's the starting lineup for the Colorado Grip. Now here's the starting lineup for your as they'll send out the line of Weekenden, McNaughton, and Zapp. Weekend gets the nod at left wing, wearing number 17 for the Wranglers. Standing at six foot three, 205 pounds. He's a left shot forward from Finland. And he's been great this season for the Wranglers. One of the Wranglers' Ironmen who has appeared in every single game this season. He's been about as consistent as can be with 24 goals, 22 assists for 46 points in 58 games this season. Wickenden has six goals and four assists in 10 games against Colorado in the season series. He also has 12 multi-point games this season. So if he strikes once, watch for him to strike again tonight. It's down the middle, it'll be number 27, Connor McNaughton, who's been red hot for the Wranglers this season in what has been a breakout sophomore campaign for him. As McNaughton stands at six foot even, weighs 180 pounds as a left shot forward from Greenville, South Carolina, McNaughton. In his second season with the Wranglers, has 13 goals and 17 assists for 30 points in 58 games. He's also a part of that three-man iron club with Weekenden and Jack McDonald playing in every single game this season. McNaughton has four goals and two assists in his last six games. And to his right, Jack of all trades, number 89, Roman Zapp, standing at five foot 11 and 180 pounds. The German forward shoots left and will round out that starting forward line 
As Zapp on the season, also having a breakout sophomore campaign to the tune of 16 goals, 29 assists for 45 points in 52 games. Zapp has two goals and 10 assists in the 10 game season series against Colorado. On the blue line, number 77, Martins Kruglidis, the big tall Latvian. Gets the start at left D. Brooklidis stands at six foot six, 210 pounds. And is playing, is playing in his 20th game with the Wranglers this season after he came over from a trade with the Merritt Centennials of the BCHL. His D partner tonight will be number two, Kyle DeMarco, playing in his 175th North American Hockey League game. DeMarco stands at six foot three, 200 pounds, and is a right shot defense from Plymouth, Michigan. DeMarco is having a career year not just defensively, but offensively as well. As DeMarco has three goals and 18 assists for 21 points this season. So that's your starting five for the Wranglers and in goal for the 50th time this season. He wears number one on his jersey. He's number one in our hearts. It's Connor McDonough getting the start between the pipes for the Wranglers. As McDonough stands at six foot five, 210 pounds. Catches left from Mendham, New Jersey. McDonough on the season has a record of 26-16-5-2, a 2.49 goals against average, an 907 7 save percentage, and one shutout on the season. He's committed to play his NCAA Division I hockey at Lindenwood University. And he stopped 23 of 26 in the 4-3 Wranglers victory yesterday. McDonough has been excellent for the Wranglers all season long. He's had a pretty big workload. More on that to come tonight. But he's handled it well, and has guided the Wranglers to their second consecutive Robertson Cup playoff appearance. So we have a ceremonial puck drop. They'll raise the lights back up. Looks like our friends from Austin Hose are dropping the puck tonight as they are the sponsor for Fan Appreciation Night here at the Budweiser Bullpen. Lots of fun stuff going on. You got a lot of fans with uh, thunder sticks. It's sure to be a rambunctious crowd here at the Budweiser Bullpen. Ben Ivey, the Wranglers captain. We'll take a photo with Peyton Miller as the puck is dropped. We'll take a picture. This pregame festivities well underway on Fan Appreciation Night. We recognize the best fans in the North American Hockey League. The fans give a round of applause. Coming up next is the National Anthem. And when we return on the Wranglers Hockey Network, First period puck drop between the Wranglers and the Grits. Colorado meets Amarillo next on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. Roll up that red carpet because we are all set and ready to go from the Budweiser bullpen in Amarillo, Texas, where the Wranglers meet the Colorado Grit for the 11th time this season. 
Just two games remain on the regular season. Colorado playing for pride, trying to gain some momentum going into year two of the franchise. For the Wranglers, they're well on their way to the Robertson Cup playoffs, looking to end the season on a high low, and they're still playing for home ice advantage. They just need New Mexico to lose to Oklahoma tonight, and that opens the door for the Wranglers to take control of the fourth place in the South Division. Amarillo is led by head coach Austin Sutter and his assistant Connor Yanni. The Colorado Grit are led by head coach Steve Haddon and his assistant coach Levi Weber. Between the pipes for Colorado, number one Jack Erickson gets the start, his 37th of the season. Colorado looking for their first win in their last 11 games. They're currently on a 10 game losing streak for the Wranglers. It's number one Connor McDonough getting the start for the 50th time this season. His 50 starts lead the North American Hockey League. His number one looks to secure his 27th victory of the season tonight. Certainly going to be a great game here tonight, so we're happy to have you with us on the Wranglers Hockey Network. As the puck is dropped and we're underway from the Budweiser bullpen. Off the opening draw, Christian Carter burrows his way deep into the Wranglers zone. He'll slide it behind McDonough from corner to corner as on the near side. It's met by Braden Freifogel and Connor McNaughton. The Wranglers able to jam the puck to the line, but Colorado stashes it back in deep. As here goes Braden Freifogel again, bumped off the puck by Kyle DeMarco. He's in the corner. Christian Carter will retrieve the loose puck. Brooklidis looks to pick his pocket at the near half wall. DeMarco there to help out, and Topi Puikinen will steal the puck away and burst up ice. And the Wranglers, behind the scenes, will get their first change of the game. It's like late whistle for an offside. Just 40 seconds into the game. Gives us our first whistle. As on comes the Wranglers first line of the Ivy Twins. Jack McDonald and on the blue line right now. The top pairing of Gagnon and Troutwine. As it'll be Ben Ivy to take the draw against Chris Graves in front of the Colorado bench. He's off the draw. Wranglers win it. Here comes McDonald. Left side shot. It's blocked. Puck bouncing back towards McDonald, settles it down, another try, and Erickson makes his first save of the game as he directs the puck off his right shoulder and out of play 50 seconds into the contest. Jack McDonald has been dominant against Colorado this season. In the season series, he's averaging two points per game to the tune of nine goals and 11 assists in 10 games on the season series. Drawn the near circle of the Colorado zone. Controlled by McDonald, quick shot there. Is stopped by Erickson with a kick save towards the far side wall. Wranglers chip back down towards the corner. An open space, Hunter Cook will get it out but not before he gets blasted by Ben Ivey. Big hit as the Colorado Demon was trying to get the puck out of his own ends. Now deep in Wrangler territory, Colorado looks to set up shop. Wranglers swat at the puck, looking to get it out and they do. On the left wing it's Jack Ivey. He'll snap a shot from the blue line that goes off a stick and into the glove of Erickson for the third shot of the game. All three belonging to the Wranglers. That stops time a minute and 21 seconds into the game. This one is still fresh. Fans are still making their way to their seats. Not a lot of empty seats in the building tonight. It's looking close to a sellout. you gotta, you got to be on time to these games. As we saw yesterday, Colorado with two goals in the opening three minutes of the game. Tonight the first three shots belong to the Wranglers. He's off the draw, Morley Phillips driving towards the goal. Erickson's able to poke it away, it'll go down the distance. No icing as TJ Ritchie will field the puck. Long pass of the neutral zone is on time for Morley Phillips. He'll swing it back, unfortunately nobody was there except for Colorado's Noah Grolnick. Laid offside on the grit as they straddle the line. Puck ping-ponging around in the neutral zone. Phillips gets it back. Fans getting loud here right below me as it's a rambunctious crowd. Brooklidis swoops out from behind his own net down the left wing. Will go across to Godowski who taps it into the Colorado end. Not pursuit. Godowski chases down Merritt, Merritt Thompson. Phillips in the area as well as the Wranglers look to steal the puck away. For the moment it appears they do as the puck moves corner to corner. Phillips throws a big chet. On the far corner as the puck bounces to the high slot. It'll be gathered by Landon West and turned over in the neutral zone. Trucletus gains the red line. He'll fire it back in. 
towards the far corner for Grayson Gerhard. He'll swing around the net towards the near side on his backhand. Tries to make a forward pass to Abrant. That's picked off by Colorado. On the right wing, it's Bowden. Centering pass off a stick. Nice defensive play by the Wranglers. They turn and transition. Is on the left wing. Miller looks to get to work. He gets dumped down by Burke. As a sharp angle shot by Abrant is turned aside by Erickson. Miller makes his appearance back into the lineup after missing yesterday's game as he replaces Victor Budik in the Wranglers tonight. That's the only change in terms of personnel tonight. As we have a whistle with 17.06 remaining in the first period. As taking Budik out of the lineup and putting Miller back in has caused some line changes in terms of combos in the bottom six for the Wranglers. Otherwise, everything remains the same. You see Puikin in paired up with McNaughton and Zapp in what is listed as the third line on the depth chart. And on the fourth line, Miller at left wing with Gerhardt as the center and Abram as the right wing. Although talking to head coach Austin Sutter, they win the draw at the line, it's Gudridge. Wranglers trying to sneakily steal the puck away. Britt keep a handle on it, is on the right side. Burke dishes it below the goal line for Poirier, up to the left side for Grolnick. He'll dart below the goal line, go low to high to the right point for Burke. He'll weasel his way down the wall, fling it across for Grolnick at the left half wall. Rolnick steadily surveys, throws it towards his right. Burke a try in the middle, a deflection, and they score. Colorado for the second straight night gets the first goal of the game as George Poirier is there on the doorstep to direct the pass from Burke behind McDonough for the game's opening score. Burke and Grolnick get the assist on what is Poirier's seventh goal of this season. It has given Colorado a 1-0 lead. Three minutes and 29 seconds into the contest. So again, for the second straight night, Colorado gets the first goal. And again, it doesn't take them long to get started. As Christian Carter rumbles in, flings a shot off the end wall, picks up his own rebound. He'll move it towards the corner. Connects with Lucas Mann. Backhand try on a wraparound. Rolls in on Connor McDonough. He'll put a paw on it and stop time with 16-11 to go in the first. Now while Colorado did get the first goal yesterday, it was the Wranglers who came out victorious. For Colorado, they haven't scored the first goal very often this season. As they're 9-14, 4-1 when they score first. The Wranglers, when trailing first, not too bad themselves as they have a record of 13-17, 4-2. Not a lot of teams can say that they have a record like that when allowing the first goal of the game. It speaks a lot about the Wranglers' resilience this season. And again, it looks like the question is, is how will the Wranglers respond? Yesterday, the response was pretty good. Let's see if the Wranglers can get it done here tonight. He's rumbling in is Topi Puikinen to his left for McNaughton. His pass goes behind Erickson and is picked up by Colorado. Carter to the neutral zone for Freifogel. Wranglers are quick to pounce on it and break it up. Move the puck onto the tape of TJ Ritchie. Ritchie, the Ohio native, has been impressive in his rookie season with the Wranglers. He's a big guy, but lately it seems like he's been in the right place at the right time, making great defensive plays. I'm excited to see what he can do in the remaining games in the regular season and in the playoffs. As Junker from his own end looks to connect with Rue. Pass number next two. And the Grit ended up scoring on one of their two shots. And he's drawn the far circle to the left of Erickson. For the moment is won by Luke Morris. Puck is swept towards the corner where it'll be picked up by Hunter Cook. On the near side half wall, Burke is checked by Morley Phillips. That'll draw the first penalty of the game. As the arm is raised and the Grit will have a chance to add to their lead as they are headed to the power play. Two minutes for boarding. A little, a little under five minutes into the contest. And so Colorado's power play that operates at 13.7% will get to work. Wrangler's penalty kill is a top 10 unit operating at 
The left side shot, McDonough fights it off. Ringler sweep the rebound away, and Jack Ivey will get the clear as the puck rolls all the way down to Erickson. Colorado power play went one for two last night. Their 27th best in the North American Hockey League as the Wranglers get a steal shorthanded. That's the Ivy Twins for you. Not just dangerous five on five and on the power play, but shorthanded as well. He's on the right wing, Grolnick banks it off the wall to the right point for Burke. Now to the left side, Goodridge's shot is blocked by Kyle DeMarco. DeMarco trying to weasel the puck away from Colorado and he is successful in doing so. And that spurs Jack Ivy into motion. On the right side, his shot. Is stopped by a kick save of the right pad of Erickson. What a shift there for Jack Ivey on the penalty kill as he heads off for a change. A little over a minute remaining on the grip power play. Burke enters on the left wing. It goes behind the net. McDonough likes to play it, and he'll clear it himself as he goes by the Colorado attackers and on the way down into grit territory. Entering is Will Hadrick the third to the left point for Rue. He's got a trailer in man. It opens space, looks to dangle. Man around the goal. Backhand try towards the middle. McDonough gets a stick on it and pokes it back out. Rip retained possession is at the line. It's Hadrick to his right for Graves. Peels back, finds man at the line once more. Lucas Mann to the left side for Hadrick. He'll creep his way down the wall. Now back up top for Mann. He'll drift in towards the far corner. From low to high, the grip move it back to Hadrick. His shot is deflected wide off the stick of Morris. Ringler swatting for it, but the grip keep it. It's on the right side, it's Mann again to the line for Hadrick. Hadrick below the left circle for Miller. Centering pass, goes off a skate. Wranglers get possession. Nolan Gagnon will mail it back down, and the Wranglers go one for one on the penalty kill. Colorado with a lot of possession time. Couldn't make anything out of it. It's a right side shot, is stopped by McDonough, and he'll hold with 13.04 remaining in the first period. Looks like Colorado, while they have possession on the power play, elected to be more patient rather than just hastily fire shots on McDonough. They didn't think they really got the look that they wanted to, as the Wranglers were in prime position to take away prime scoring lanes and scoring opportunities. So it's still a 1-0 Colorado lead off of the goal from George Poirier. As the ring goes off defensive zone draw, flip it into the Colorado end. Jack Ivey steps in, McDonald from the point, and a save made by Erickson between the circles. Jack McDonald right there in prime scoring position is shut down by Erickson. Looks like Colorado's learned their lesson. You gotta watch out for number six and 93. From the neutral zone, TJ Ritchie will wrap it back in. Jordan Gutteridge, the Dartmouth come out, commit, excuse me, will work his way to the neutral zone and backhand it towards Martins Kruklidis, who dives and tries to get the puck out. It's held in by the grit. Kruklidis gets a nice defensive stick in the way to regain possession for the Wranglers. And now Zapp will clear it to the neutral zone for McDonald. Jack McDonald, an extended shift here as he backhands it deep for Ben Ivey. Also an extended shift for him. Ring goes on the four check, unable to come away with the puck. As Duncan Shin works his way to the red line. And now the puck will leap into the Wranglers bench for a stoppage with 11.59 remaining in period one. And that sends us to our first media timeout as we'll step aside with 11.59 to go in the first. Wranglers nothing on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Welcome back to the Yellow City, where Colorado has a 1-0 lead. Neutral zone draw is won by the home team as McNaughton gets it done at the faceoff dot. Fuglidis will plug it down behind Erickson. Wranglers on the forecheck get a steal as behind the net it's Zap for McNaughton below the left circle. They'll go low to high for Kuklidis. Back to McNaughton at the half wall. He helps the puck along towards the far side. Nobody there except for Hunter Cook. Colorado will exit. On the left wing, it's Braden Freifogel towards the middle and a nice defensive stick by McNaughton to break up the pass. Now Colorado's not done. Stuff attempt. McDonough the save and the Wranglers get back out to center. Dopey Pawikinen will just chip the puck down and head off for a change. Colorado proving that they're dangerous in transition. Nice back check by McNaughton on that last shift to deny him a prime scoring chance. Christian Carter to the neutral zone. Flings it right on goal to McDonough. Wrangler's Nipminder, he's no stranger to playing the puck, will keep it moving. 11 minutes remaining in the first period. As Gerhardt knocks the puck down behind Erickson. First man on it is Will Hadrick. Wrangler's crashing in on him from the right point. Gagnon which the shot wide right of the goal. Colorado gets a stick on it. Will wheel it out the center, but not before Gagnon blasts a grit. On the far side boards, that's Noah Grolnick, and he is slow to get up. And an arm is raised, looks like Gagnon's going to the box, but what a massive hit by number 19 in blue. He absolutely plastered Grolnick. And for the second time tonight, Colorado heading to the power play. Nolan Gagnon, not the biggest guy you've ever seen. But boy, can he throw his weight around. Unfortunately, this time, it's going to be a penalty. Pagano standing at 5'10", 165 pounds. He's not a guy that you want to mess with as he gets two minutes for head contact. So the Grit who are 0 for 1 on the power play so far tonight. They won 1 for 2 yesterday. Again, have an opportunity to make it a 2-0 lead. Wrangler's penalty kill has been steady and strong this season. 10th best in the North American Hockey League at 83%. They'll look to go two for two. Drawn to the right of McDonough on the far circle. It's Sheldon Rue, the youngster, the youngest player in the North American Hockey League, will go up against a veteran of the sport in Ben Ivey in the faceoff circle. Rue victorious at the dot. He plays it up to man, point to point. Hadrick. Back to the left side for Mann. Across, right wing Graves peels at the circle. Gets it up top for Hadrick and he fumbles the puck. Wranglers catch a break as the Grit are forced to regroup and reload. Graves will plash the puck in. Funny bounce off the boards and it's in! McDonough was trying to come out to play the puck and it just caromed oddly back into the net. Some crazy backspin there, and the Grit cracks a stroke of luck. It's 2-0 Colorado. Very similar to what we saw in Shreveport. We call it the Amarillo bounce. Seems like none of them. And just ricocheted off the far side corner of the Wranglers zone. Back towards the goal off of McDonough. He was coming out to play the puck and into the goal. Huh? Tough break for the Wranglers for the second straight night. Colorado gets the first two goals of the game. And so off the draw, Rip will plug it back in. It is officially a power play tally for Colorado. As the grit see the puck go deep into their own end. Looks like we're experiencing some experiencing, excuse me, some issues on NAT. We apologize, They're looking to actively fix, fix the issue. If I hear on hear on any word if that is fixed, I will relay to relay that to you as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the Wranglers in their own ends. Fling it down the distance for an icing with 929 to go in the first. And so we'll take a look and see who gets credited. With that Colorado second goal off the crazy bounce, looks like it goes to Chris Graves. 
And so for Graves, that is his sixth goal of the season. And it looks like getting the assists. No one. It's unassisted. Chris Graves. Although I think he can give the corner wall, the Budweiser bullpen boards, the primary. Colorado with the puck in their own ends. Stretch pass. Off the stick of Shin and into Wrangler territory. Wranglers paddle it back towards the Colorado end. Bowden will retrieve. And it's from the red line. Colorado knocks it back in towards the far corner. Quickly, this is the first man on it. He's got time to make a decision, but not for long. As the Grit come in and steal the puck away. Quickly, this trying to keep it on his stick. Battle for it on the far side boards, and the Wranglers keep the puck. Fuglita strong on the puck, gets help from Morris. Wranglers on the entry, are offside with 8.47 to go in the first period. It'll be a neutral zone draw on the near side at the top of the Colorado blue line. Luke Morris out there with Phillips and Godowski. One of the, that line has been one of the Wranglers' best lines over the last couple of weeks. They're tasked with the next shift as Morris wins the draw. Wranglers plug it in, racing after it is Cole Semenyuk. He gets there first. He taps it towards the far corner for Morley Phillips. He looks to backhand it towards the slot. He connects with Godowski. He goes behind the net. Godowski strong on the puck. Plays it to Semenyuk on the right side. Now to the goal. Phillips is there. Erickson with the poke check. Grit are able to clear. Lucas Mann on the left wing. Meets Henry McRoberts in the far corner. Big crunch there from number five in blue as the Wranglers get the puck back. Morris sprints down the right wing. His shot flutters towards the goal. And Erickson snags it with a glove save. And afterwards, Morley Phillips is jousting with two Grit members as Luke Morris is exchanging words with Hunter Cook. No love lost between South Division opponents. As time stops with 8-12 on the clock in the first period. When you see your opponent as many times as these two teams have, you get to know each other very well. And you get to have a lot of distaste for your opposition. And so I'm not surprised that things starting to boil over here early in the game. As McNaughton comes out to take the draw. Wranglers victorious for a moment. As the puck got caught up in the skates of McNaughton, Colorado's able to fish it free. They'll prod it towards the neutral zone. The trout line meets it at the red line. But the grit settle down the bouncing puck. Look to move forward. But Nolan Gagnon gets a grasp on it. And the Wranglers start their next breakouts. To the left wing, weakening for McNaughton. His snapshot goes off a stick and out of play. Hunter Stick had his twig in the right place at the right time. That was Hunter Cook. Nice defensive play there. And so Wranglers will see the faceoff move towards the near circle of the Colorado zone. Connor McNaughton will take the draw against Chris Graves. To the right of Erickson. McNaughton wins the draw to the left point for Troutwine. Save made by Erickson on the long shot from number three. Behind the goal, it's Zapp. Centering pass is broken up by Gudridge. The puck boomerangs back to Zapp in the far corner. He's met by three grip members. And Colorado is able to slide the puck back out to center ice. Nick Troutwine starts the next breakout. Weaken in on the left wing. Takes a shot, flutters over the goal. As it took a tip, went over Erickson's glove. Grit able to guide the puck back out the center ice again, but here come the Wranglers, weaken it. Dancing, below the left circle for Zapp. Up to Gagnon at the right point, and he just couldn't settle the puck down. It springs a two-on-one for Colorado. Poirier, left side, McDonough the save! No rebound! And afterwards, again, we have a little bit of a skirmish. Bad blood between these two rivals. But what a save by Connor McDonough on George Poirier, who elected not to pass and take the shot. It keeps it a 2-0 Colorado lead. We'll 
Wranglers. Wranglers had a good chance in the Colorado wins. Unfortunately, the puck had other ideas. As Nolan Gano struck in to take the shot, leaped over his stick. Colorado gets a two-on-one the other way. McDonough stands firm. Now two-on-two as the Wranglers enter. Rumbling in is Jacob Miller. Left side, his shot is blocked and goes onto the tape of Landon West. Turnover here in the slot, save made by Erickson on Miller. Wranglers keep the puck. As left point, Kruklidis directs it behind the goal. Miller looking to try and shoulder the puck back into the Colorado ends. On the forecheck, he gets a stick on it, but the grit are able to weasel the puck back out to center ice. Wranglers still looking for their first goal of the game, but it's not for a lack of trying as they've outshot Colorado 9-6. It's 6.20 and counting remaining in the first. That Miller line stays out there as they look to keep the puck in the Colorado ends. Instead, going down the right wing is George Poirier. His snapshot goes wide of the goal, and the Wranglers start their next charge. In transition, it's Grayson Gerhard. Gains the center ice logo, moves down the left wing, and plugs it around towards the far corner for Elias Abrant. Abrant jockeying with two grip members as the Wranglers make a change behind the scenes. Streaking is McDonald, fresh off the bench, but he just couldn't corral it as the grit are able to tap it back out the center ice. Here comes Ben Ivey, left wing shot, save made by Erickson as the Wranglers captain was chugging along towards the net as Erickson gets his 10th save of the night with 5.44 remaining in the first. And so it looks like Jack Erickson has picked up right where he left off. He was excellent yesterday. And he's stood tall tonight for Colorado. Stopping all 10 shots that he's seen and a lot of them have been at high quality. In the faceoff circle, McDonald gets a win as on the left wing it's Ben Ivey. He pushes the puck towards the middle. Wranglers can't get a shot off. McDonald gets hauled down. No penalty as Colorado will move into the attacking end. Man gets body off the puck nicely by McRoberts. Wranglers get to the neutral zone. TJ Ritchie with the puck in his own end in open space. He'll loft it towards the neutral zone. And settling it down is Ben Ivey. Forward for Jack Ivey. On the left wing, it's McDonald. Stops at the top of the circle and finds Ben Ivey. He'll deke his way towards the slot, but the puck just slid out of his grasp. Now moving the other way is Braden Freifogel. On the left wing, wedging his way towards the corner. He'll hack it off the end wall to the right side. And Colorado will dig it deeper. They'll peel back as Nick Troutwine will backhand it towards the neutral zone. Wranglers directed in. Ben Ivey delays for Jack Ivey. Excuse me, make that Jack McDonald. Nice move towards the left side. McDonald towards the goal. Shooting and a save made by Erickson in close quarters. Another try by Phillips. Goes wide left of the goal. Colorado able to get possession and roll out to center ice. And the Wranglers were able to strip Chris Graves of the puck. Move out to center. Fans take up a let's go Wranglers champ with 4.15 remaining in the first period. Goodrich deep in his own end, hounded by Morley Phillips. Wranglers get possession. He's on the near side. Phillips towards the middle looking for Godowski. Out of his grasp to Gagnon, right side blast. Hits the stick of Thompson and slowly rolls in on Erickson. Or he'll cover up with 4.01 remaining in the first period. Wranglers have doubled down on Colorado in terms of shots. Wranglers lead the shot count 12-6. But it is the grit that have a 2-0 lead off of goals from George Poirier and Chris Graves. Again, we apologize to our viewers on NATV for the technical difficulties. Um, they shot from the line is snagged by McDonough. He makes a glove save with 3.44 to go in the first. Thank you to Jill on YouTube for alerting me that there is an issue on NATV. Again, I do apologize for that issue. It seems to be system-wide, meaning league-wide. 
Colorado will pump the puck back into the Wranglers end. Group lead is in open space. Connects with Godowski at the Wrangler blue line. Nice backhand pass to Phillips. He juggles the puck as he enters on the left wing. Phillips towards his forehand for a trailer and Kruklidis. His shot goes towards the goal and Burke flags it down and directs it towards the corner. On the near side, Godowski will rotate behind the net on his forehand. Stuff attempt. Erickson puts the pad down and keeps it out. On the left wing, Grolnick. Burst down the left wing, loses an edge and in turn loses possession. Kyle DeMarco beneath his own goal line. Feeling the heat from Chris and make that Wilder Jacober. As Jacober swoops behind the net, gets a grasp on it, works his way towards the wall and centers a pass that goes in and out the other side. Wranglers lift the puck towards the neutral zone. Jacober doing it all, gloves it down and re-enters. Jacober down the left wing. Backhand trying towards the middle and they score! Bowden out in front, he directs it in. Colorado leads 3-0. So Colorado, with nothing to lose, looking to end their 10-game losing skid, comes in and stuns the Wranglers here in the first period, scoring the first three goals of the game with 2.34 to go in the first. The most recent one belongs to Quinn Bowden, his second of the season, coming from number 29, Waller Jacober, as Colorado has extended their lead to three. Now man on the left wing, looks to slide it towards the middle for Carter. Buck hops behind McDonough and wheels around towards the near side. Grit keeping a handle on the puck, but not for long as the Wranglers are able to jab it back out to center ice. A hush has fallen over here at the Budweiser bullpen. Wranglers need to find a way to stop the bleeding and get the crowd back in their favor. Entering is Merrick Thompson, delaying. Quick pass to the left side, Carter's got it in the corner. He'll rotate it over towards the near side for Looks like Merrick Thompson, who's jockeying with TJ Ritchie. Semenyuk gets control of the puck as Freifogel steps in on him. Freifogel able to strip Semenyuk of the puck in the far corner, but he's got no help as his teammates are making a change behind the scenes. Strong play by Freifogel, keeps the puck for Colorado. But Grayson Gerhardt is able to step in and peel it away. As the Wranglers look to get a goal here in the late stages of the first period. Miller, Peyton Miller that is, through the neutral zone, towards the Wranglers goal, backhand try is kicked aside by McDonough. Now at the left point, Hadrick all alone, creeping down the wall, centers a pass that goes in and out of the slot. Now Jacob Miller for the Wranglers gains the red line, he'll backhand toss it into the Colorado zone as we're approaching the one minute mark of time left in the first period. Jack Ivey stashes the puck in the Colorado zone. It's kicked back out to center ice. And Gagnon will kind of pull it right back in. Fans getting loud for the final minute here. Maybe the Wranglers, if they hurry, can cash in on the crowd noise and the ramp up in intensity. At the red line, bouncing puck. Settled down by Peyton Miller. Looks to find a trailer moving in stride with him. Nice defensive play by Gagnon to break up the puck. Colorado able to burrow it back down behind McDonough. They wheel it towards the left side where Cook steps in. The defenseman pinching down the wall, jockeying with Jack McDonald at the half wall. Wrangler strong on the puck, trying to weasel it away, and they do. And now behind the play after the puck battle is won by Gagnon. Hunter Cook commits a penalty as McDonald goes down. He's on one knee, looks like he's clutching his face. I believe he was high sticked or maybe elbow, that's kind of in my blind spot as it is on my near side. But the whistle did blow and it looks like with 8.9 to go in the first, the Wranglers should be heading to the power play. But instead the door opens and McDonald's gonna go. And fans are not happy about that as McDonald appears to be taking a seat. It's gonna be another grit power play. So looks like I spoke too soon as I mean, now it's going to be a four on four. So at least 
One is going to go on each side as Hunter Cook is now in the box as well. So looks like they're just going to take them both there. As Hunter Cook takes a seat, McDonald as well. Needs to get two for roughing. With eight seconds on the clock. You can round up to nine, 8.9 .9 seconds to be exact. And so wait, now they've taken a penalty to McDonald off, so it looks like it's a double minor to Cook. So actually this is going to be a Wrangler power play. So we've just sent you through a roller coaster of emotions. But it actually ends up being a Wrangler power play because Cook gets a double minor. McDonald just gets a single minor, pen, minor penalty for roughing. So that ends up putting the Wranglers on the power play. Draw is won by the Wranglers, but stepping in is Grolnick. It's a breakaway the other way. His shot, save made by McDonough, as Cook, Grolnick was bursting in in the final stages of the first. And the Wranglers just be happy to make it to the locker room. Only down by three as Grolnick was looking to make it a 4 nothing Colorado lead. Another 10 seconds to go. As the Wranglers won the faceoff, Grolnick stepped in with a burst of speed and stole the puck away. Found himself on a breakaway with McDonough, the only person to beat. And Connor McDonough gives the Wranglers one last save at the buzzer. So after 20 minutes of play, it's Colorado three and the Wranglers nothing. Coming up next on the Wranglers Hockey Network is the first intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages where we will recap the events of the first 20 minutes of play, preview period number two, and also take a look and see what's going on in Oklahoma City as the game between the Ice Wolves and the Warriors has major implications as to whether or not Amarillo will be in contention for home ice advantage in the play-in round against New Mexico. All that and a whole lot more when we return in a couple of minutes on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Welcome back to the Budweiser bullpen where it's Colorado with a 3-0 lead after 20 minutes of play as we bring you back inside the Texas Panhandle. The first intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. Guy Carenza here in what has been a fast-paced game that right now has Colorado up by three. Here's the story so far. Three minutes and 29 seconds into the contest was George Poirier from Bowen Burke and Noah Grolnick who made it a 1-0 hockey game. And it was just one of those plays where Colorado moves the puck around and Poirier stationed out in front of the net to receive the puck from Burke who is creeping down the right wing wall. Odd goal there as it belongs to Chris Graves technically, although you could pretty much give the goal to the Budweiser bullpen boards as Graves was just trying to dump the puck in from the neutral zone and it went off the near corner, excuse me, off the far corner. My near side is your far side, so I have to adjust in real time. Anyhow, it went off the far corner, bounced back towards the net, and McDonough, who was trying to come out to play the puck, kind of just wasn't able to react in time as the puck bounced off of him and into the back of the net. So an unfortunate series of events for the Wranglers there. The goal technically does belong to Chris Graves. It is his sixth goal of the season, and it does technically cash in as a power play goal. And so the Grit at that point had a 2-0 lead. But they weren't done yet as late in the first period. Similar to what we saw on the Poirier goal, Quinn Bowden directs a pass in from Wilder Jacober to make it 3-0 with 2.34 left on the clock in the first. And again, I say similar to the Poirier goal because kind of the same setup where you have a guy stationed out in front of the net, uh, you have a guy moving down around the wings that kind of just whips it towards the goal, hoping that uh, either the goaltender is screened or you have a guy out in front of the net that is able to tip the puck in. Well, uh, the latter is true as Bowden was out in front of the net to direct the puck behind McDonough. And so the Wranglers now, after one period of play, staring down the barrel of a three-goal hole. So it's going to be interesting to see how this Wranglers team responds because... At, from what I saw, and the Wranglers right now are out shooting the grit 13 to 10. From what I saw, the Wranglers were not bad offensively. The issue is kind of similar to what we saw yesterday where Colorado had a 2-0 lead after one period of play. Is The Wranglers had some really good chances. They end up going 0 for 1 on the power play technically. Although only 8 seconds have drained off of that. They'll start the second period with a minute and 52 seconds of power play time to work with. Um, so for the Wranglers, offensively, I think it's been a pretty good attack. I, th I, th I like the ideas that the Wranglers are trying to do. I mean, it's very similar to what we saw yesterday. Uh, and the Wranglers probably could have had two, three goals on the board after one period. Uh, but Jack Erickson has made some good saves when he's needed to. And that's kind of been the story for Colorado this season is they haven't really got any of that from their goaltending this season. And that's one of the reasons why Colorado is last place in the division as all three of their goaltenders average about four goals against a game. So goaltending, goaltending has been one of the biggest woes for this Colorado team, but what we've seen over the last uh, four periods in this series here this weekend is that Colorado has actually gotten some pretty impressive goaltending from Jack Erickson between the pipes, and that's given them a chance to take down the Wranglers and really spoil the party as the Wranglers are looking for home ice advantage in the play-in. So I like what the Wranglers were cooking up offensively uh, they just couldn't find a way to, to get a puck to bounce their way. They also had some really good chances where the puck just had a mind of its own and leaped off of their sticks. So uh, it really can be said that puck luck in the first period favored Colorado. They got a goal out of it. It is what it is. I think for the Wranglers right now, you can't let frustration keep it creep in. Uh, the Wranglers have done a lot of really good things in the first period in this game. I think they just need to tighten up defensively. You can't let guys camp out in front of the net. You got to do some dirty work. You got to get that guy out of the way in front of McDonough because for Connor McDonough, he ends up stopping seven of 10 shots in the first period, but I would argue that all three of those goals really aren't on Connor McDonough uh, as there was a guy on two of them stationed out in front of him to tap the puck in. Of course, the crazy bounce off the dump in from Graves. So uh, I think for the Wranglers, you can't let that frustration get into your head playoff teams, good teams, are able to stay calm, cool, and composed and realize there's still 40 minutes left on the clock 
was a lot of time for us to come back. You had a power play chance to start the second period. You know, this game is far from over. As we saw Colorado lead after one period yesterday, and the Wranglers did win that game. Now, the deficit is a little bit bigger here, three instead of two, but Colorado, when leading after one, are only six, five, and two. So Colorado this season uh, haven't led after one period very often this season. It's a rare sight to see, and they aren't very good at holding leads. So we'll see if the Wranglers, who went trailing after one, have a record of 8-12-2-1, can come back and make this thing a game. Now, you look at that record when trailing after one, 8-12-2-1, there's a lot of teams, not just in this division, but in this league, that aren't able to come back from things like that. This Wranglers team is special, and I say that because they just miraculously find ways to hang around in games. They find ways to come back and sometimes win, most of the time win, or at least sometimes squeeze a point out of it. We've talked about how good the Wranglers have been in one-goal games. Uh, they, they've just been phenomenal. As the Wranglers, when it comes to winning one-goal games, have done just that. They have a record of 17-2, 6-2. Uh, in games that are decided by one goal for Colorado, they're 6-10, 3-2 in games that are decided by one goal. So that's kind of been the tale of two teams this season. Wranglers finding ways to win games that come down to crunch time. Colorado, not so much. And so if you think if the Wranglers can get one or two goals here in the second period, hold Colorado off the board, maybe at least make this a 3-2 game heading into the third period. I like the Wranglers' chances there, but you've got to find a way to get some goals on the board in the second period. Now, the good thing for the Wranglers, and I know everybody at home is going, oh boy, we've heard this spiel before, but it's really been the story of this season. I mean, this is game number 59. We know what we're going to get from this Wranglers team. Not a lot of scoring in the first period, but hey, we got that uh, second period surge, as I've coined it, as the Wranglers again fail to score in the first period. Not really much of a surprise this season as the Wranglers have not scored a first period goal in their last three games. Now the last time they scored a first period goal was one in the 5-2 loss to El Paso on March 22nd. But you look at the Wranglers in the second period, they have at least one goal in every single game dating back to the 4-2 loss in Shreveport on March 9th. So you look at that, that's seven straight games with at least one goal in the second period. The second period surge is real, people. And you look at the Wranglers scoring from period to period, 36 goals in the first period, 61 in the second, 65 in the third. So we've said it a lot this season, and it's become kind of a regular spiel here on the broadcast. But it's worth noting that with the Wranglers down by three here in search of a goal, I would put money on the Wranglers scoring in the second period because it just seems to be that's their bread and butter. And so we'll see if that second period surge comes into effect here tonight as the Wranglers have proven that whatever adjustments they're making from period one to period two are working wonders. And it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, doctors hate him because he found out their secret. Well, <laughs> the Wranglers coaching staff seems to find some way to apply a cure-all remedy after one period to two. And uh, we'll see if that comes into effect here tonight. I'm interested to see what Colorado head coach Steve Haddon does to combat that as this is unfamiliar territory for Colorado. Like we said, they haven't led a lot after one period of play. As, again, we'll reiterate the grit. When leading after one, just 6-5-2. and two. Only 13 times they've uh, led after one period. It'll be interesting to see how this young team handles the pressure. We used to say that they don't just kind of sit back and try and coast this thing out after one period of play with a 3-0 lead. It's going to make for a lot of fun. And uh, it's going to make some high drama here on Fan Appreciation Night here at the Budweiser Bullpen. And a good thing for the Wranglers working in their favor is this crowd's going to be fired up to come out to the second period. Wranglers going to have a power play chance. Power play has been dominant against Colorado this season. The season series, the Wranglers power play against Colorado operating at around 35%. So you think about a one in three chance that the Wranglers score on the power play. I'll take that any day. 
It's a big opportunity for the Wranglers to get one on the board and cut the deficit to two early on in the second period. It's a big game. It still means a lot for the Wranglers, although they've already punched their ticket to the playoffs, but it is dependent on the score between the Ice Wolves and the Warriors. We'll take a peek at what's going on on our out-of-town scoreboard when we return in just a minute on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. Welcome back to the Budweiser Bullpen, where fans in attendance are singing along to Dancing Queen, the famous ABBA song. As they're getting fired up, we'll take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard as the Wranglers need New Mexico to lose to have a chance to host the play-in series. The Wranglers have some work to do themselves as they need to win the next two games against Colorado, including tonight, so they need to win tonight. They win to need to win tomorrow to have a chance to pass New Mexico and claim fourth spot in the South Division. Right now, Oklahoma is doing the Wranglers a huge favor as Carter Spruill and Drew Sutton have made it a 2-0 Warrior lead at the top of the second period. So everything is shaping up in the Wranglers' favor. They just have to find a way to take care of business themselves. So if that score holds, the Wranglers control their own destiny and will have a chance to host the play-in. As with the Ice Wolves victory, New Mexico will host and claim fourth spot in the South Division and have home ice. The Wranglers will head to Albuquerque next weekend for the play-in. Another news in what is kind of a meaningless game as Shreveport has locked up the second seed in the South. El Paso will sit in third. The Rhinos have a 2-1 lead over the Mudbugs in what is both the season series finale for both clubs midway through the second period. And finally, well, no, looks like I guess that's it because uh, Corpus Christi and Odessa wrapped up their regular seasons yesterday, so they're done. So only three games in the South here tonight. Our game, New Mexico's game, and the Rhino Mudbuck battle. So that's the roundup from around the league. Wranglers will skate from left to right. Colorado from right to left, as you see it on NATV, which, from what I've been told, is back up and functional. So big thank you to Jill Forty on YouTube for relaying that information to me. I very much appreciate that, um, and I do apologize for the technical difficulties that they had. Uh, I've been told that it's league-wide, um, but it looks like they—it seems like they've gotten that resolved. So, uh, again, thank you for your patience. We're, we're very sorry for uh, that technical difficulty, and hopefully, uh, it's smooth sailing from here on out. Wranglers will have a power play chance, almost a full two minutes, only eight seconds gone off of that. As Hunter Cook is in the box. Although they do lose Jack McDonald, who is serving his minor penalty, so the Wranglers will not have his services available. 
to cut into the Colorado lead. It's 3-0 grid here at the top of the second period. Wranglers looking to change that with a power play goal to start period two. As they drop the puck, we are underway. Grit win the draw, they get a free clear to begin the penalty kill. Nolan Gagnon with speed through the neutral zone, drops it off for Zap. In motion, he'll leave it for Jack Ivey. He'll enter on the left wing, play it to Phillips at the left point, and now towards the half wall for Jack Ivey. And now along the wall, clearing attempt is held in by Gagnon to the right point for Ben Ivey. Down low in the corner, it's Zap. Back up to the line for Gagnon. To the left side, it's Jack Ivey. Returns it to Gagnon. He'll snap a shot towards the goal, and Erickson turns it aside. Behind the net, it's Ben Ivey towards the near half wall for Zap. Up at the point, Gagnon to Ben in the right circle. Settles it down. Spin towards his forehand to Phillips, and the slot in his shot just rolled off his stick, and Colorado is able to clear. One minute remaining on the Wrangler power plays. A stretch pass from McDonough is intercepted by Poirier. Colorado will send it back down. Fans take up a let's go Wranglers chant. It's, it's almost a packed house here at the Budweiser bullpen. Wranglers need to take advantage of one of the best crowds of the season. As McNaughton enters on the right wing. He'll push the puck towards the net, sprawling out to get a defensive stick on it was Jordan Goodrich. At the right point is DeMarco. To the near half wall for Morris. Back up top, DeMarco D to D for Troutwine. He'll drop it down low for McNaughton. In the far corner, it's Morris. Up to the line for Troutwine. D to D, DeMarco, a blast! Erickson the save, and he juggles the rebound, but he is able to freeze it with 14 seconds remaining on the Wrangler power play. Kyle DeMarco one goal away from having, or for tying his career high in goals. He's got three right now in the season. So he'll stay out there. Weekend and McNaughton and Morris. Three forwards for the Wranglers. DeMarco and Trout on the two demons. So three forwards, two demons in the waning moments of the Wrangler power play. McNaughton wins the draw. Trout Wine keeps it in. On the right wall, it's McNaughton. He's it for Puikin in the corner. He'll ride up the wall and I'll backhand it down low for McNaughton. He'll move it corner to corner for Morris. Side steps the pressure to the left point. DeMarco, a blast and a blocker saved by Erickson to keep it a 3 0 game as the penalty expires. Colorado slides it down the length of the ice. That will be an icing. They were back to even strength. Clock stops two minutes exactly into the second period. So Colorado. Goes one for one on the penalty kill so far tonight. Wranglers come up empty handed on the man advantage. Drawn to the right of Erickson on the far circle. Grayson Gerhard will duel with Chris Graves. Graves already having a goal tonight, which was the second of the game. Colorado is able to jam the puck back into the Wranglers zone. TJ Ritchie. Will guide the puck to the neutral zone. Abrant finds a moving Gerhard. Left side shot blocked by Thompson. He's feeling that one. And the puck goes behind the net. Ritter quick to whip it up to the left point where Richie holds it in. He flutters a shot towards the goal and Erickson gets a glove on it. The stop time with 17.34 to go in the second. Again, the Wranglers need Oklahoma to defeat New Mexico in any fashion tonight to open the door for the Wranglers to have a chance to host the play-in series. New Mexico is to lose and the Wranglers need to find a way to win this game or at least get a point in it and then win tomorrow. Is that the line, Richie? Will blast it around towards the near side wall. Racing after it is Miller. He gets a touch on the puck. Finds a man down low. Abrant towards the middle for Gerhard, And his shot goes wide of the goal. Nice patience from Elias Abrant. The Wranglers just ran out of room. Colorado knocks it back down deep into the Wrangler end. Richie picks it up. Moves it to Semenyuk. He's being hounded by Freifogel. Number seven in white stepping on the heels of Semenyuk. Is able to peel the puck away and wedge it towards the end wall. Grit move low to highs. At the right point, it's Gudridge. To the wall for Mann. He'll twist it back down 
beneath the goal line where Richie bodies off Christian Carter from the puck with a thunderous hit. Wranglers get possession, moving out to center. Christian Carter back up on his feet. We'll wind it back down into the Wrangler end. Fans taking up a self-started Wranglers, let's go Wranglers chant as they're looking for something to cheer about. We got a guy with a shirt off behind the Colorado bench. Rays, Wranglers going back to the power play. And the hard work from the captain draws a penalty. Wranglers have another chance to make it a two-goal game. It's going to be hooking against Will Hadrick. That sends the Wranglers to their second power play of the night. So far 0 for 1. They're looking to change that here. Point for Jack Ivey. Along the wall, Ben Ivey prods it towards the corner. Ritter able to dig it free, but keeping it in is Zap on the right side. Zap to the line, Jack Ivey can't settle it down as the puck jumps up over his stick. Now it is worth noting that temperatures have risen in Amarillo over the last couple of days. Some hot days, ice is looking a little wet, not just because of the resurfacing between period to period, but it's looking a little spotty in some areas, and so Wranglers are probably well aware of that as by now. As in comes McDonald towards the middle for Zap, his shot is stopped by Erickson, and a quick juggle of the, juggle of the puck is kept into the glove of the Colorado netminder. And with 1.14 left on the Wrangler power play, he freezes with 15.26 to go in the second. Draw to the right of Erickson on the far circle. Luke Morris to take the draw. Puck goes careening towards the far corner. Wrangler's looking to keep possession, and they do. McNaughton corner to corner up to the right point for Troutwine. He'll backhand it back down to McNaughton station behind Erickson. Towards the near corner, it's tweaking it. Low to high, Wranglers rotating to the left point. Troutwine fakes the shot, finds Morris on the far side wall. He gets it up top for DeMarco. His pass rolls off his stick, and the grit get a freeze clear. As here comes Christian Carter, left side. He can't get a shot off as Troutwine had him bottled up nicely. And Nick Troutwine, strong and steady, gets possession back for the Wranglers, a little over 30 seconds remaining on the power play. As McNaughton finds a trailer in the middle, Puikin in shot, goes wide of the goal. It bounces off the end wall to Morris. At the left point, Troutwine settles it down, flings it towards the goal. It goes off the backside of McNaughton and towards the near side. Puikin in. Keeps it in the Wranglers' grasp. 15 seconds on the power play. Centering pass broken up by Erickson. Morris is there, and Colorado dumps it off the far side boards and back down to McDonough for a clear. Wranglers end up going 0 for 2 on the power play, but not for lack of trying. Sometimes it's what happens after a power play. You can get some momentum as Jacob Miller right down. Broadway takes a shot, and a glove saved by Erickson. Denies Jacob Miller as he was looking for his fifth goal of the season to get the Wranglers on the board. Seems like the Wranglers got a spurt of momentum despite not scoring on the power play. These next few shifts are going to be critical as Gerhardt will take the draw against Graves on the far circle of the Colorado zone. Graves wins it. He, Burke, off his own end wall. Wranglers peel the puck away. Miller behind the net doing the dirty work. Finds Abrant in the far corner. The finish forward on his backhand. Finds Miller. He'll slap it towards the near side half wall. Gerhardt's there to meet it, but so are the grit. They're able to wedge it out the center. And now for the Wranglers, wind it back in. Miller staying out on the four check. Wranglers keeping it at the right points. Bouncing puck is settled down by Hadrick. He'll move it D to D to Burke. And now Colorado starts their next breakout. As Graves on the right wing, slams it off the wall towards Mc McDonough, who's out to play it. On the left side, Thompson's shot. Gloves saved by McDonough. He'll hold with 13-16 to go in the second period and what is still a 3-0 Colorado lead. 
I thought that was a really good shift there from Jacob Miller, the New York native. Hard on the puck, trying to make things happen. Look at a well-deserved breast over at the bench. As on comes the top line of the Ivy Twins and Jack McDonald. Your two D-men right now are Richie and Semenyuk. Drawn to the right of McDonough, won by Colorado. Puck escapes the zone, Goodridge back at the red line. Will just pump it back in. As Ben Ivey collects it on the right wing. One touch pass, Jack Ivey was looking for Semenyuk. As he finds McDonald up ahead. He stripped of the puck by Bowden. McDonald looking to get it back. As Bowden plugs it back down towards McDonough. Winkler scoot it into the Colorado end. Thompson first man on it. Kept in on the clearing attempt on the right wing by McDonald. At the half wall, Colorado gets the puck back. They flip the script and send it towards the far side. He's racing after it is Shin in the far corner of the Wrangler's zone. He loses the puck behind the net to DeMarco. Puck battle here. Colorado looking to get it back. Wranglers have other ideas. And Struklidis gets possession. Jack Ivey rumbles into the attacking zone. Flings it towards the goal. Never saw Erickson. Thuds off the end wall to Cook. As the Wranglers find a loose puck. Streaking towards the goal is McDonald. Back end a forehand and he can't get a shot off. McDonald keeps it. And now he twists and turns and sends it over the goal. Colorado gets it to the blue line. Kruklidis flags it down. Second attempt by Colorado. And the grid are able to get the puck back in their grasp. Great starts to the next breakout. Long pass to Puri on the money. His shot is stopped by McDonough as he holds on with 11.34 to go in the second period. Big save by number one. Keeps it a 3-0 Colorado lead. This is the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. Wranglers down by three, but have done a good job of outshooting Colorado here in the second period. As the Wranglers have outshot Colorado seven to three in the second frame. Freifogel on the right wing beneath the circle. Looks to center it. Morris gets a stick on it, juggles the puck, and bursts through the neutral zone. Luke Morris to the right wing looking for Phillips. But the Wranglers are called for being offside. 11-18 remaining in the second frame. Despite the Wranglers being down by three. This crowd does still have a lot of confidence. Fans are still making a lot of noise. And so the good thing is that for what is one of the biggest crowds of the season, they haven't lost any life. Christian Carter directs the puck in. Nick Troutwine is able to scoop it out towards the neutral zone. Wranglers take flight. Here comes Godowski on the left wing. His shot towards the goal goes off a stick and stays in play as it plops down in the near corner. Colorado muscles it towards the neutral zone as Braden Freifogel turns up ice. He'll wind it in. Gagnon gets it, whacks it up towards the right side for Phillips. Colorado responds by rainbowing the puck back out towards the neutral zone. As both teams exchanging possession here. Trout wide, D to D for Gagnon. He'll slide it on the right wing. Puck is knocked off a stick towards Poirier on the far wall. Fans take up a let's go Wranglers chant as we're approaching the midway point of the game. At the left point, McRoberts wants to hack it on the wall to keep it in. Colorado is able to slam it out. 
Poirier on the left side, tries to dangle around McNaughton, unsuccessful. Zapp can't corral the puck in the neutral zone. If he did, he would have had a breakaway. Puck luck not on the Wranglers' side here tonight. McRoberts in the neutral zone, blasts it into the Colorado ends. Now it looks like there's a hit behind the play. Looks like in the thick of the play. Whistle is blown, there's a grip player down. As clock stops with 9.38 to go in the second period. I kind of saw that out of the corner of my eye. I'm not sure who that is for Colorado on the near side half wall. But they're going to receive some medical attention. And hopefully he's going to be all right. Wasn't quite sure who threw that hit. Zap was in the vicinity, but I can't say for certain if it was him or not. The Colorado player is still sprawled out. And hopefully, he's going to be okay. It looks like it's Jordan Gutteridge who is just now getting up to his feet. Fans give him an ovation. He's able to skate off under his own power. Looks like he'll return to the Colorado bench. And so the next question becomes, is there a penalty to be handed out for what just, chan for what just transpired? like Colorado head coach Steve Haddon is going to get his explanation as he talks things over with Mr. Baker. Steve Haddon, longtime Colorado man. Spent seven full seasons with the Colorado Eagles. You spent some time in the CHL. Became an ECHL franchise, and now they are the AHL affiliate of the Colorado Avalanche. Had in his fifth all-time in games played for the Eagles. He had 98 goals, 136 assists, 234 points in 374 games. Not too bad. And now Austin Sutter, who's a CHL legend in his own regard, gets a quick explanation from, Bla from Baker. Austin Sutter, the 2008-2009 CHL Man of the Year with the Amarillo Gorillas. Impressive stat line with 152 points in 237 games with the Gorillas. He didn't need to talk things over long. Looks like they're going to stay five on five. He's off the draw. Colorado player goes down. That was Cook. Looks like Colorado is going to get their power play anyway. Wranglers still need to touch up. As behind the play, Junker goes down. And now the Wranglers touch up. And there's going to be a penalty here. The question is, is there going to be one or two? The Colorado player went down off of the faceoff and then behind the play in the ensuing seconds. Looked like Junker was high sticked. So we'll see. In the moment, it looks like Jacob Miller's going to the box for the Wranglers. Either way, Colorado is going to have a power play. Going to be two minutes to Jacob Miller for holding. And the Grit go back to the power play. The draw will be to the right of McDonough. Ben Ivey will take the face off. Rip will win it. At the left point, it's Mann. Dangling the line towards the right side for Burke. Back up top for Mann. Dish it towards his left. Rumbling in as a shooter, and McDonough makes the stop. Might have been blocked out in front by DeMarco. Puck stays in the zone off a regular clearing attempt. And the puck rolls into Troutwine, and he will do the deed and send it all the way down to Erickson for a clear. Quartet for the Wranglers right now. Ben Ivey, Jack Ivey, Troutwine and DeMarco. Two forwards to Demon as Grolnick enters down the middle. And now a turnover here. Ben Ivey all alone. Breakaway shorthanded. Save made by Erickson. 
Ben was looking for his fourth shorthanded goal of the year. Jack Erickson wasn't having any of it. As Ben tried to go blocker side, Erickson was ready. Colorado regroups at center ice. Lucas Mann leaves the puck in open space for Grolnick. West moves it towards his right for Poirier. He'll feather it back to West. Right circle shot blocked by Morris. Puck goes careening behind McDonough. Man races in to get the puck. He flings it to Jack Ivey. And now he'll move it to Luke Morris. In motion, left side, Morris backhand shot is stopped by Erickson. And he keeps the play moving. Two good chances for the Wranglers shorthanded. Under 30 seconds to go on the Colorado power play. Chris Graves flies through the neutral zone. Stops in the far corner, is met by Morris and McRoberts. Low to high, grip move D to D. Left side, shot is blocked. Puck plops down in the near corner. Hadrick looks to settle it down. He moves it to Peyton Miller. To the right wing for, Pori for Rue. In the circle, direction out in front, and it goes wide of McDonough. Second attempt is blocked by the Wranglers, and they get a clear. Fresh off the bench is Zap. He's got it. Looks to find a trailer. Back to even strength. McNaughton backhand try goes off the side of the net. Wranglers get the kill, and now here comes Peyton Miller. He'll dart towards his left. Colorado well offside with 7.02 to go in the second period. Now afterwards, looks like Peyton Miller tried to take a shot at Henry Roberts, and both of them are heated, and they're exchanging words. Looks like McRoberts is being directed towards the penalty box. And Peyton Miller's going to go as well. And we'll see if these offset or if we're going to have four on four here. Now Miller comes out of the box. McRoberts is headed down towards the tunnel. Looks like both guys are going to head down towards the locker room. And we'll see if it's just a 10 minute misconduct. Or something more. As I have to say, I think we've seen players get misconducts and stuff for much worse than that. But anyhow, we're about to get the official call. It'll be a neutral zone draw in front of the Colorado bench. Looks like we're gonna stay five on five. And it is a 10 minute misconduct to both Miller and McRoberts for unsportsmanlike conduct. Colorado sets up stop. Make that Amarillo, rather. As the puck rolls behind Erickson. At the left point is TJ Ritchie. Whips the shot towards the goal, score! TJ Ritchie, his first in the North American Hockey League, gets the Wranglers on the board. It's three to one. And the Wranglers have life. Thanks to TJ Ritchie's first saw it as he was screened out in front and the big man gets the Wranglers on the board. With 6.39 to go in the first, it's a 3-1 game. It's Ritchie from Zap that gets the Wranglers party started. And hopefully this is the first of many for the Wranglers. It was just Zap from down low up to the point for Ritchie. Took a chance and flinging the puck towards the net and it goes right over the play has been exceptional over the last couple of games. As here he is now in the neutral zone, off the face off, trying to prod it down the near side wall. Semenyuk trying to escape from danger in his own zone as Colorado applying some heat on the forecheck. Fry Fogel comes away from the pile with the puck. He'll toss it down low. Colorado, a couple of quick passes, and they turn it over. 
Jack McDonald jumping Jack Flash, rolls down the left wing, settles the puck down, gets knocked down to the ice. No penalty, and Colorado will escape. On the left side is Christian Carter. They'll dump the puck in. The crowd has been rejuvenated, and the Wranglers only trail by two. Jack Ivey plays the puck into open space, where it's picked up by Cole Semenyuk. He'll wheel the puck around towards the near side half wall where McDonald meets Hadrick. Puck battle, escaping with it are the Wranglers. At the right point, DeMarco fires it towards the goal, and it goes wide. And after the play, McDonald, excuse me, DeMarco gets dumped down behind the play. He's back up on his feet. He'll have to defend against Grolnick on the left side. As the Colorado shot goes up and over McDonough, the momentum carries it out towards the neutral zone. Morris. Gains center circle. Pitches it towards his left. Kadowski slap shot. Is kicked aside by the right pad of Erickson. In the corner, Wranglers wheel it towards the center. And it goes in and out of the slot and is collected by Grolnick. Finds Poirier streaking forward. His snap shot is blocked by the leg of Kruklidis. Keeping it in on the right side is Junker. Towards the half wall. Back to Junker. His shot from the line. Easy save for McDonough. And now the Wranglers get possession. Kadowski's pass for Phillips does not connect. It ends up being an icing on the Wranglers with 4.41 to go in the second period. Draw will be on the near circle of the Wranglers zone to the right of Connor McDonough. Luke Morris will take this draw for Amarillo. He's been trusted in the faceoff dot many times this season. And he's well above the league average for faceoff win percentage. And he adds to that total with a win there. Ringler's pumped the puck to the neutral zone all the way down to Erickson. No icing. And Erickson sees Morley Phillips streaking towards the net. He's not a gambling man. He elects to just play the safe route and freeze the puck with 4.34 to go in the second period. And what is now a two goal game as the Wranglers answer the Colorado three-goal start with T.J. Ritchie's first in the league. Drawn to the left of Erickson on the near circle of the Colorado zone. Gerhard will take it against Graves. Gerhard wins it at the line. Swatting at it is Gagnon to keep it in. But tumbles into the far corner. On the four check is Jacob Miller. Britt looking to escape the heat. Wranglers applying it as Miller gets the puck back. Driving towards his left. Miller flings it towards the slot. Never found its way there as it goes off the shin of Birkin behind the goal. Now in the far corner, Burke will guide the puck back. Groups and reloads. Wranglers drop the puck down deep once more as Gerhard races to the puck, battling against Burke and Graves. Puck is free for the moment, and fishing it out is Junker. Colorado will skate it out of their own end. Puck is pitched back down behind the Wrangler cage where McDonough will play it. Troutwine with it on the far wall. Lofts it towards the Colorado blue line where it's juggled by Miller. He has it on the left wing. He'll go behind the net. Stuff attempt out in front is Gerhard. And he couldn't find a way to stash it by Erickson. Now Braden Freifogel in open space. Evades Topi Pukkanen. He'll gain center red. And... Catapult the puck back behind the Wrangler cage. It's met by Amarillo, but kept in at the right point by Thompson. Now it's jabbed out the center, weakened it. Chasing after the puck, he's got Cook to beat. Puck is directed towards the far side wall. Zap for a trailer and a shot by Gagnon is blocked. Freifogel scurries after the puck and scampering through the neutral zone will enter Wrangler territory where Semenyuk closes him off of the puck. 2.53 to go in the second period. Ringler's trying to pull within one or maybe tie this game late in the second period. You never know with these guys. Is that the left point? Richie jabs the puck back in, but it comes boomeranging back to the big man. He'll fling it back in. On the right wing, it's Ben Ivey. Deking in the right circle. Down low, McNaughton tries to stash it in. Goes off the backside of the net and into the far corner. He'll jockey for it there and coming free with it is Hunter Cook. He'll pass the puck towards his left. And the Colorado grit 
Skip a puck back down towards McDonough. Never saw the Wranglers netminder. Throwing attempt is picked apart by Shin. Wranglers get a steal. Right wing Jack Ivey enters. Backhand pass towards the middle. Just escapes McDonald. Couple feet out in front of him. Now Bowen Burke to the left wing. It's Shin returning to Burke. Left side shot. McDonough fights it off. Hits him in the mask. Stuns him for a moment. But he's able to sweep it out towards the neutral zone. Long shot McDonough. Gathers his senses and makes a save. Colorado noticing that he was reeling. Just plugged it towards the net. And McDonough hastily regains his bearings and makes a save. It looks like he's a little jumbled up right now. Hopefully he's going to be all right. As he stops time with 1.50 to go in the second. For Connor McDonough, this is his 50th start of the season. He has become the 23rd goalie in the 49-year history of the North American Hockey League to play 50 or more games in one season. Now this is a prestigious list that includes some NHLers like Connor Hellebuck, Anthony Stolarz, Hunter Shepard. A lot of really good names that have played a lot of games in the North American Hockey League. Hellebuck played 53 for Odessa about a decade ago. In case you're wondering, the record is set by Jake Clark back in 2005-2006 where he played 57 games between two teams in a 60-game season. Absolutely absurd. But McDonough has had a lot of the workload, but he shouldered it well. you got to hope that it doesn't catch up to him at some point as the Wranglers are going to need him for the Robertson Cup playoffs. Buck jumps up towards the Wranglers bench, stays in play. Colorado jams it on the right wing, and here comes Grolnick. Right circle shot, and he scores. Noah Grolnick goes far side, and Colorado gets their three-goal lead back. It's 4-1. to one. For Noah Grolnick, he gets his 18th goal of the season. Picks up his 12th in a Colorado uniform on the goal that has made it a 4-1 hockey game with 1.28 to go in the second period. For Grolnick, he now has pretty good figures in the season series, leading the grit in points against the Wranglers. Colorado right back in on the right wing. Hadrick below the goal line looks to center it. Gagnon breaks it up. Ringlers looking to get it back before the period expires. Gerhardt to the right wing for Abrams. He'll stash it down to the corner for Gerhardt. Centering pass by Miller. Goes on to the tape of Jacober, and Colorado will escape out the center. Under one minute to go in the second period as Troutwan gets to the buck in the near corner. Britt looking to make some noise here late. Fans getting loud on the far wall. Braden Junker, high slot shot. McDonough turns it aside. Puck jumping behind the net, centering feed. is sniffed out by Jacob Miller. He'll force it to the neutral zone. Abrant is able to direct it into Colorado territory. There's DeMarco, moves it from high to low. Junker behind the net, sees two men crashing in on him quickly. Levels it towards his left, and in comes Christian Carter. Long shot, wide of the goal. Towards the right side, Fry Fogel keeps it in. Quickly, this gloves down his pass for Carter, although it does boomerang back to Fry Fogel. Time expires, and that is the end of the second period. So after 40 minutes of play, it's Colorado four and Amarillo one. As the Wranglers look to mount another impressive comeback in a third period, down by three goals. Coming up next on the Ringler's Hockey Network is the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. We'll recap all the events of the first two periods and look ahead towards the final period and talk about what the Wranglers need to do to come back and win this game. We'll also take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard and see what's going on at Blazers Ice Center between the New Mexico Ice Wolves and the Oklahoma Warriors. All that and a whole lot more we come back in just a couple of minutes on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Well, the Wranglers have some work to do. Down by three, four to one is the Colorado lead after two periods of play as we welcome you back to the Texas Panhandle into the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. Guy Carenza here, and uh, well, certainly this isn't the way that the Wranglers thought this game would play out with a lot on the line, chasing home ice advantage in the play-in. Of course, they need a few other things to go their way in order to make that a reality. But the Wranglers need a win here tonight, that's for sure, to make that a possibility. And so far, remains a tall task as Colorado jumped out to a three-goal lead. Let's talk about it as we'll recap the events for the first two periods of play. Three minutes and 29 seconds into the contest, it was George Poirier from Bowen Burke and Noah Grolnick making it a 1-0 Colorado score. Poirier's out in front of the net, directs a Bowden shot pass, or excuse me, Bowen shot pass behind McDonough for the game's opening goal. With 10-18 to go in the first period, puck luck not in the Wranglers' side as Chris Graves on the power play chops it towards the far side corner wall of the Wranglers' zone. Takes a strange bounce, ricochets back to the blue paint off of McDonough, who is trying to come out to play the puck, not anticipating where the puck would rocket towards. And it goes off the Wranglers' netminder and into the back of the net. Colorado leads at that point 2 to nothing. But the grit weren't done there as a late goal in the first period with 2.34 on the clock from Quinn Bowden for Wilder Jacober. Makes the 3 nothing game, and that goal was scored pretty similar to the way that Poirier scored. The fact that Bowden was stationed out in front of the net was able to direct a slap pass from Jacober into the back of the net for a 3 nothing score. And that's where we stood after 20 minutes of play. Into the second period we went. Wranglers needed a goal. They got one with 6.39 excuse me, to go in the second period. T.J. Ritchie picks an excellent time to get his first goal in North American Hockey League. With two games to spare, the big man takes a shot from the left point towards a screen out in front of Erickson. The Colorado netmind never, netminder never saw it, and it ends up in the back of the net for the Wranglers' first goal of the game to make it a 3-1 score. Roman Zapp gets the primary and only assist. But instead of it being a 3-1 game heading into the locker room, Colorado restores their three-goal lead. It's with 1.28 to go in the second period. Shot from the right side. In the circle, beats McDonough far side as Noah Grolnick cashes in for what is his 18th goal of the season to make it a 4-1 hockey game. And that's where we stand right now. Um, again, not really the way that the Wranglers wanted this game to go to this point and I don't think it's the way they expected this game to go to this point but uh, we kind of alluded to it in the open in case uh, you are just joining us and you missed the open I know we did have some technical difficulties on NATV which I do apologize for we talked about how Colorado they're still a hungry team and, and while it may look like this grit team has nothing to play for they've been eliminated they've been eliminated for a while this is a team that only has 11 wins on the season. They're in the middle of a 10-game losing streak. They don't want to end their season losing 12 games in a row. They didn't want to get swept by the Wranglers here this weekend. And so what I think you're seeing here from Colorado this weekend, we saw it yesterday, we're seeing it again here today. What we're seeing from this grit team is you're seeing a lot of guys saying, hey, a lot of us are going to be back next season because the average age of this team is around 18 years old. They're a very young team. A lot of them have a chance to come back. One, they don't want to end the season on a low note. They want to build some momentum going into year two, the Colorado Grit. But the other thing is you have a lot of these guys that have the potential to come back next season. What you're seeing is a very hungry roster and guys that want to make a statement as to saying, hey, Steve Haddon, Levi Weber, I should be on this team next season. Look at what I did down the stretch. Look at those games that we played against the Wranglers. Look at those games down the stretch. This is why I should be on the roster next season. Now, I think we're seeing a lot of hungry guys. Noah Grolnick has looked really good for Colorado. He's having a multi-point affair, one goal and one assist so far tonight. He's uh, had his way in this season series against the Wranglers. You're seeing guys like Bowen Burke making cases as to why he should be back. He's only 19 years old. And so Wilder Jacober, another one of those guys, well, he is 20. He's trying to end his North American League career on a high note. So this is a Colorado team that, while it may not look like they have a lot to play for from an outside glance, still very much a lot at stake for this Colorado team. And for the Wranglers, 
it's kind of difficult to gauge because it, 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 to me, it doesn't look like it's for lack of trying. It's not for lack of effort. It's not for lack of heart. But right now, I think Jack Erickson in the first period held down the fort in the first period. Wranglers were out shooting the grit in the second period. In fact, they did outshoot the grit, I believe, in the second period. I'll double check that stat right now. Yeah, the Wranglers did not shoot the grit 14 11 in the second period. Wranglers out shooting the grit 27 to 21 here. I mean, it's not for lack of trying for the Wranglers. I, I do think that they have had some good offensive opportunities to score. It just hasn't gone their way. And we talk about puck luck a lot. And you, it, there's a lot of times where, you know, we, we talk about puck luck and it's okay to, to blame some gains on puck luck. Puck luck, excuse me. I mean, we saw it here tonight in full effect. Graves pretty much gets a free goal off of the funny bounce in the corner. But again, that would only make it a two goal game at this point. Bounces haven't gone the Wranglers way. It looks like the ice is a little funky here this weekend. We're late in the season. That's just how it's going to be. If you're Amarillo, you can look and say, you know, we haven't really gotten the puck luck here tonight, but I think defensively there's a lot of thing, ways that the Wranglers can improve here in this game. A lot on the Poirier and Boating goals. Uh, you know, there, there never should have been a guy out in front of the net. Colorado just did a good job of camping a guy out in front. And again, you talk about those slap passes. Well, there's two of them cashing in for Colorado. Um, so, that, so the grit get two goals there. And so, okay, you exclude the funny bounce. There's that, but then Grolnick down the right wing takes a shot, beats McDonough far side. That's another one where he, he, he probably should have had that. So for the Wranglers defensively, I think you just need to tighten up here a bit in the third period, understanding that Colorado's not going to back down. They didn't back down in the second period. They did a good job. Colorado did in the second period, kind of staving off whatever the Wranglers threw at them. And listen, this is a good crowd here tonight. All is not lost for the Wranglers. They've got a great crowd, one of the best crowds of the season, from what I can see, uh, kind of cheering them on here tonight. If you're able to take this momentum here in the third period and mount this comeback, this crowd's going to make it pretty pretty easy for you, uh, you know, and, and not to say that it is going to be easy because it's going to be tough despite going up against an 11 win team. This is a Wranglers team that time and time again this season has proven that they are resilient. They can come back and win games and so I think right now with a playoff berth secured, a date with the New Mexico Ice Wolves on the calendar, Wranglers just have to find a way to do what they've done all season long, remain resilient, persevere to the very ends, and showcase what they're all about. Last night it was the big guns showing out, uh, really your star players getting the job done, getting the Wranglers goals when they needed it. Look to those guys here tonight, look for the top six uh, to play a huge role, and if the Wranglers are able to come back, you've already got a goal from a deaf guy in TJ Ritchie. Wranglers just have to uh, continue to persevere offensively. And I think the Wranglers have actually done a lot of good things offensively. They outshot the grit to this point, 27 to 21. They put some good chances in on Erickson. Some bounces haven't gone their way, but if you're the Wranglers, you can't blame it all on puck luck. You have to find a way to score. And so we're turning our sights towards the third period. We'll see if they can do. Uh, I thought that the Wranglers, while they have remained aggressive on the four check here tonight, I thought they did a much better job of stealing pucks away and creating chances making life difficult for Colorado in their own end on the four check yesterday I'd like to see a lot of that come back here tonight especially here in the third period as the Wranglers make a push to tie the game and come back and win so we'll see if that plays a factor in the third period third period technically by scoring has been the Wranglers best period this season so we'll see what it has in store as the Wranglers look to mount the comeback against the Colorado Grit down by three. Wranglers still in play for home ice in the play-in round, but first they need New Mexico to lose in any fashion. So we'll see what's going on over at Blazers Ice Center when we come back on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Welcome back to the Budweiser bullpen. Tail end of the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. I'm Guy Carenza. This is the Wranglers Hockey Network, and the score right now is 4-1 Colorado, who's looking to play spoiler on the Wranglers' pan plans to push for home ice in the play-in round. As we take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard, the big one that we have circled right now, New Mexico Ice Wolves need to lose in any fashion for the door to be open for the Wranglers to take control and have a chance at a shot at home ice. Right now, the Warriors are doing the Wranglers a huge favor with a 4-2 lead over New Mexico after two periods of play. And again, if the Warriors win, the Wranglers just need to win out or at least lose this game in overtime and then win tomorrow to tie New Mexico at 73 points and then win that tiebreaker due to head-to-head -head points. And they would have home ice and the games in the playing would be played in this building instead of over in Albuquerque. And I think that's the big thing right now, right, is the Wranglers just need to lock in and play as good as we know they can be. I thought the Wranglers did some really good things offensively in the first two periods. But listen, I, I, the score is apparent and it reflects this. We know that this Wranglers team is better than this. Were the Wranglers bad in the first two periods? No, I don't think so. I don't think you can use the word bad. Were the Wranglers up to their standards? No. And I think for the Wranglers in the third period here, it's about how bad do you want it? How bad do you want the win? How bad do you want to have the chance to play playoff games in this building with a great crowd like this roaring in your favor? I think that's the question that the Wranglers have to ask themselves. You know, they've already secured a playoff berth. That's what's at stake here tonight. And if the Wranglers want it, they'll come back and try and get it. And if they don't, well, I guess it'll be apparent. And Colorado will end up ending their 10-game losing streak. It's going to be an interesting ride to the finish. I mean, knowing Austin Sutter as a person and as a coach, he's not going to back down. Uh, no matter what's at stake, he's going to have his guys ready to play. He's going to be ready to go. It's just a matter of if the, key, if the team can take shape here and provide a good effort in the third period to try and come back from a three-goal deficit. The Wranglers have been down by three at least uh, twice in this game. First it was 3 nothing, and now it's 4-1 to one as the Wranglers went trailing after two periods. 6-15, 4-1 Colorado. When they lead after two, they've only done it nine times, 7-2. and two. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Those two Colorado losses when trailing at, when leading after two, both at the hands of the Wranglers. Yeah, yeah, it does get interesting, doesn't it? Because if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be am the Amarillo Wranglers. I've said that many times this season. A lot of times they've backed me up on that. No reason to go against them now. As Colorado's put up four on the board, it's going to take the Wranglers at least four to tie it, five to win it. The good news for the Wranglers, when they score four more goals in this building, they're 12-1. and one. So that statistic is in their favor. The crowd is in their favor. There's a lot of things working in the Wranglers' favor, but the one common denominator that's not in the Wranglers' favor is puck luck. Bounces just haven't seemed to gone the ring, have gone the Wranglers' way. And I made note of it midway through the second period, kind of touched on it last time we spoke here in the intermission report. It's been pretty, pretty hot here in Amarillo the last couple of days. Now, tremendously windy. My goodness, I mean, they call Chicago the Windy City, but if there's a number two, it's Amarillo, Texas, man. I just, like 40 mile per hour winds uh, here this afternoon. I mean, driving to the arena, I'm, my car's getting rocked back and forth. I'm like fighting for my life on the highway. But, uh, you know, I digress. The weather has been warm. I mean, it's that time of year. We are in the south after all. And so sometimes there's conditions out of your control that kind of lead to the ice getting a little bit rough at this time of year. Now, there's a certain spot that I could see directly in front of me at the red line, in fact, right at center ice, I guess on the far side, which is my near side at the top of the logo, right between Budweiser and Bullpen. You can see that there is a very shallow pool that just collects water right at the red line. And there's many patches here, especially in the corners, that uh, have areas that look like that. So the ice right now isn't in the greatest of shape. We know how the boards are in this building. I mean, they just seem to have pucks rocket any way you can imagine with no idea which way they're gonna go. And uh, the Wranglers have known that this season. We've learned that very quickly, in fact. And uh, unfortunately, the Wranglers were on the wrong side of one of those bounces on the Graves goal. So 
I think here in the third period, the Wranglers just need to be calm, cool, and collected. Understand that you're down by three. Time's not on your side. You, you certainly have to have a sense of urgency. But knowing that you also have to find a way to settle the puck down and be aware that the puck is going to be jumpy. Okay, It's going to be like a stone on the pond. It's going to be skipping around. So it's going to, one, score goals as quickly as possible. You're going to need at least three of them. Two, keeping the puck kind of settled down and making smart plays. So I know this Wranglers team has the skill to do it. The advantage that they have is that they've played in this building all season long. If anybody's used to it, it is them, not Colorado. So we'll see how it shakes out here in the third period. Officials are back out on the ice. I'm going to step aside one last time before we get set for a third period action here at the Budweiser bullpen as the Wranglers look to mount an incredible comeback on the second to last game of the regular season. This has been the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. Both teams are back out on the ice for third period action. Wranglers will skate from right to left, grit from left to right as you see it on NATV. We'll paint a picture for you on YouTube as the Wranglers wearing their blue jerseys here tonight for the second straight game. Last time we saw the Blues prior to yesterday, first week of the Ice House. So it's been a long time since we've seen the Blues. And I love that look, white shoulder yoke, blue jersey. White numbers, white lettering, professional red mixed in there. Oh yeah, it's a good look for the boys in blue. And the good news is you have a chance to make it your own. Yes, these very jerseys, game-worn jerseys, are going to be up on the Dash Auction app following the end of the season, whenever that may be. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Meanwhile, the puck is dropped. We're underway for the third period action where Colorado's either going to come away with a victory and end their 10-game losing streak, or we're going to see one of the greatest comebacks in hockey history. Wranglers looking to climb out of a three-goal hole. It starts now. On the right wing, man with the puck. Button hooks at the half wall. Finds Freifogel for a shot that is turned aside by McDonough. He moves into the far corner. Freifogel with it once more. He's able to deke around Krukulidis. Pinned up against the wall. Jack Ivey's got his man. Back to the corner, it's Krukulidis. Two men come off for Colorado. Two men come on. This West tries to dangle towards the high slot. Freifogel picks up the loose puck, and he'll jam it behind the net for Grolnick. Puck leaped over the stick of Grolnick. Luckily for Colorado, Landon West is there to scoop it up at the far half wall. Van Ivey sparring with him in the corner. Two Wranglers, two grit there now. Krukulidis joins the fray. Wranglers have numbers in the puck battle on the boards. And it looks like it's taking a lot of muscle, a lot of time, but finally... The big Laffy and Krukulidis is able to come away with it out of the pile. He slides the puck to the neutral zone for McDonald, who's being hounded by George Poirier. And the hard work of Poirier strips McDonald of the puck, and Colorado will knock it back in. McDonough plays it towards the far corner for DeMarco. He'll twist it out towards the neutral zone and a little bit more as Colorado fields it in their own end. On a coming attack from the Wranglers, forces Colorado into sending the puck down to McDonough. Thought it was going to be an icing, but it does come to the Wranglers' netminder, and so we play on. Stretch pass on the money for Zapp. They'll wind it behind the net. Colorado 
hastily moves back to the neutral zone where Sheldon Rue will flip it towards the near corner. That'll be an icing as he did not gain the red line and Nick Troutwine gets to the puck first. So a minute and 53 seconds into the third, the Wranglers will have an offensive zone draw. Looks like it's going to be to the right of Erickson. Connor McNaughton trusted in the faceoff circle. He's a natural center. Saw him play some wing this season, but now he's back in the center position. He's been good in the faceoff circle. But that one belongs to Colorado. The Grit are able to force the puck back out to the neutral zone. Wranglers looking to regroup and reload. Wranglers driving down the right wing. McNaughton has met on the near side wall. Left point shot from Troutwine. Goes off a stick and into the protective netting for another stoppage. Two minutes and 13 seconds into the third. It's like neither team has taken a shot on goal so far, at least has been credited with one, as far as I can tell. Draws to the right of Jack Erickson. Near circle of the Colorado zone, Luke Morris and that energy line out there as Morris wins the draw. Wranglers move it point to point, Semenyuk. Escapes the pressure from Grulnik and drops the puck down behind the Colorado cage. Orly Phillips tries to slip up the near side wall. Colorado able to jar the puck back out to center. As it's up for grabs at the Wrangler blue line and it comes boomeranging back to Semenyuk in the Wrangler defense. Semenyuk stretch pass for Godowski. Chops at it in front of the scorer's table. Braden Junker return it to TJ Ritchie in the Wranglers defense. Stretch pass is offline for Phillips. Wranglers have iced the puck. A little under three minutes into the third period. We have a series of whistles to begin the third, slowing the game down a little bit. And I have to think that that works in Colorado's favor. But the more stoppages we have, the longer the Wranglers don't score, the more and more the crowd falls quieter and quieter. Draw to the left of McDonough on the near circle of the Wrangler zone. Morris wins yet another as TJ Ritchie will scoop it out of play. And so another stoppage. 2.55 into the third. TJ Ritchie, the lone Wrangler goal, his first of the season and his first in the North American Hockey League. Spent some time with the Cleveland Barons before joining the Wranglers. Richie's been one of those guys that's just gotten better and better as the season has gone on. There's another draw is won by Morris. Richie will pound it towards the neutral zone, bouncing puck into the grasp of Bowden. He'll reel it all the way down to McDonough. As the Wranglers look to get a grasp on the puck. Colorado four check, making life difficult for Luke Morris deep in his own zone. They're pinned up against the end wall. Duncan Shin going against the former Rhino and Luke Morris. Orly Phillips able to step in and free the puck from the battle. And now Luke Morris out of the fray, rejoins the play. Right side, Kodowski, one-timer on the zone entry. Just goes screeching wide left at the goal. Now Colorado responds. He's on the left wing, it's Jacober. He's directed behind the net. Kodowski and DeMarco defending. As Godowski putting in good work in the near corner of his own zone. DeMarco able to weasel the puck away from the pile. He'll tap it off the far side boards looking for Morley Phillips. The pass was a little too far ahead. DeMarco will retrieve it. Back in his own den. Long pass for Abrantz. Goes off his stick. He's returned to Kruklidis. Now Abrand enters on the right side. He looks to go around Real Hadrick. Puck spurts towards the high slot. Nobody is there except for Bowen Burke. He'll glide his way towards the red line and fire it into the far corner of the Wrangler end. Carter turns and shoots well and wide of the mark and onto the tape of Grayson Gerhard. Spinning and turning around his own net. And as aggressive on the forecheck was Lucas Mann. Stretch pass for the Wranglers. On time for Miller. Left side shot off the stick of Junker and out of play. 
Walk stops with 15, 13 to go in the third period. Wrangler's got a line change. On comes the first line of Ben Ivey, Jack Ivey, and Jack McDonald. The two D-men are Troutwine and Gagnon. McDonald will take this draw against Graves. We've seen McDonald take a couple of draws this evening. Not something that we've seen him do a whole lot. He does win that one. Ben Ivey's shot goes wide of the goal, keeping it in is McDonald on the right wing. To the middle for Jack Ivey in the slot, trying to rip a shot away, and Colorado strips him of the puck. Oh, that was a good look there for the Wranglers, but even better defense from Colorado. As the most dangerous player on the ice at that moment was Jack Ivey. Colorado stood firm, but here comes Jack McDonald right back in. Racing down the right wing wall, Colorado bodies him off the puck. Wranglers keep it. He's on the left wing, McDonald gets it back from Jack Ivey. He'll force it towards the right corner. Wranglers go low to high. At the point, it's Gagnon. Now all the way around towards the left wing. Troutwine racing, trying to keep it in. The D-men pinching. Colorado seeing that will jar it off the boards and out of play with 14.26 to go in the third period. And I like that shift there from that first line for the Wranglers. They'll head off. And while they didn't score, I think they did generate some good momentum for the Wranglers, something to build upon. We're a little over five and a half minutes into the third period. Wranglers need to get a goal right now, and they need to get one quickly if they want a chance to come back. Well, there is a still a considerable amount of time left on the clock. The quicker, the better. The draw in the near circle. McNaughton will take it against Landon West. As McNaughton's out there with Puikinen towards his left, zapped to his right. McNaughton wins the draw. Weekend and rumbles towards the near corner. He'll leave it for Zap and flutters it towards the middle. And Erickson pokes the far side as Grolnick takes a shot. And it goes up and over the ears of McDonough and out of play exactly six minutes into the third. Draw on the far circle of the Wranglers zone to the right of Connor McDonough. It'll be Wilder to Cobra to take it against Connor McNaughton. And McNaughton wins another. He plays it behind the net. The Marco there jockeying with Shin. He moves up towards the near side wall. Call around towards the slot. To Cobra a try. And McDonough on high alert directs it towards the far side corner. Colorado aggressively trying to keep the puck in their possession. Battle along the boards is won by Amarillo. Now springing forward is Connor McNaughton. To the left wing, he finds Topi Pukinen. Pukinen, rather, as Topi. Beneath the goal line, centers for Zap. One-timer, score! Roman Zap gets the Wranglers back on the board. Wranglers are only down by two. It's a 4-2 game. Topi Pukinen in deep. Centers it for Zap. Ball alone. And the Roman Zap. And Roman Zap has his first of the game. And the Wranglers have their second. It's Zap from Puikinen and McNaughton. On the goal. That makes things a little bit more interesting. Matt Cole coming, six minutes and 35 seconds into the third period. Now down by two, the Wranglers have plenty of time and momentum on their side to make this thing a hockey game. Colorado responds by winning the ensuing faceoff and plunging it back into Wrangler territory. Behind his own net, Troutwine sweeps it towards the near side for Godowski. One touch pass to Phillips. Now here he goes. Right side, Phillips trying to juggle a bouncing puck. And Colorado is able to get just enough on it to get it back into their grasp. On the left wing is Freifogel. He gains the circle, goes behind the net. On his backhand, Braden Freifogel twists it towards the middle. And Morley Phillips is able to direct it towards the far side wall. Lucas Mann peels the puck away to the right point for Burke. From the wall, takes a shot, McDonough fends it off, goes behind the cage, Colorado keeping possession. As Mann, left circle, finds a trailer, and Burke and a big save by the left pad of McDonough, keeps it a two-goal game. 
Colorado right back on their horses. Rue in the slot. Save made by McDonough as the net had come off. But what a miraculous save by the Wranglers' netminder. He's laying it all out on the line. Two big pad saves. First one with the left and now one with the right to deny Colorado their fifth goal of the game and keep the Wranglers right in it. And then that had come off, but it's a good thing that McDonough did make that save as the whistle had not blown. And we learned earlier this season that it's at the officially in crew's discretion as to whether or not to blow the play dead. And in that moment, they didn't. So the puck had gone by McDonough and over the goal line where the net would have been, would have been a goal. So that save is very critical for the Wranglers. And they get it from number one. Draw will be to his right on the far circle of the Wranglers' zone. Buck is slapped towards the far half wall. Play moves into the corner. Now back up to the line. Thompson keeps it in. He'll drop it from high to low. Graves gets blasted by Morley Phillips. Big hit. Crowd roars in appro approval. He's on the left wing. Gadowski towards the goal. His shot goes wide and into the far corner as Morley Phillips absolutely annihilated a grit skater right in front of the Wranglers bench on the far side. And now fans given a jolt of life by the zap goal and now by the on the near side. Delays for a moment looking to find a man moving forward. Colorado snips it out. Buck goes trickling back down behind McDonough where McDonough will get a grasp on it once more. His pass for Ben Ivey goes off the captain's stick. Grit elect to plug it back down deep again. Now Ben on the near side, finds Jack Ivey center circle. Down the middle, takes a shot stick save by Erickson. On the near side, Colorado once more. Able to scoot the puck back down towards Wrangler territory. Wrangler's looking to regroup and reload. On the right wing, it's Henry McRoberts. To his left for Jack Ivey, hits him in stride. Jack on his backhand, cycles around the net, gets crunched on the end wall. DeMarco holds in the clearing attempt, right side shot into the skates of Ben Ivey. Now to the left wing, McDonald gets shouldered off of the puck and Colorado will skate out of their own end. McGritt will pump it back in behind McDonough, Kruklidis will feed it towards the far side wall. Abrant will carry out the center. Elias Abrant down the middle, directed towards his left, keeps it in the near corner. He's working against Will Hadrick. Hadrick strips the finish forward of the puck. A little over 10 minutes to go in the third. And Colorado will ice it with 10.05 remaining in regulation. Well, the next goal of this game is critical. If it goes Colorado's way, the tough task to climb. You gotta think that the grit would be able to skate this thing to victory, but if the Wranglers get the next goal, and if they get it soon, oh mama, we could have ourselves a comeback on our hands. Draw on the near circle to the right of Erickson. McNaughton will take it and win it. Keeping it at the line is Troutwine. His shot goes off a body and spurts back out the center. Troutwine will reload and fire it towards his left, looking for Zap, and the bouncing puck goes Colorado's way. And streaking in is Jacober. Backhand shot, never found the net. Wranglers guide him towards the far corner and then steal the puck away. The loft and out the center, it skips like a stone on a pond. It trickles between the circles where it's gathered by Bowen Burke. Stretch pass off the stick of Jacober. And in deep in the Wrangler end. Fans take up another let's go Wranglers chant. The crowd is on their side. Here come the Wranglers, it's McNaughton at center. Twists it towards his left for Zap. At the blue line, feeds it towards the middle. Goes across for Gagnon, shot towards the goal. It's sticked away by Erickson towards the end boards. Now behind the net, it's Zap. Low to high, at the right point, Gagnon. And beneath the circle for McNaughton, centers it, and tied up was Godowski. Wasn't able to get a shot off, Colorado clears. He's deep in his own end, Gagnon plays the puck for the Wranglers. As we take a look over at Blazers Ice Center, Warriors holding a slim lead, 5-4, with seven minutes to go in the third there. Wranglers need the Ice Wolves to lose in any fashion 
for a chance to have home ice in the play-in. Again, we will reiterate that the Wranglers, by losing in overtime tonight and winning tomorrow with an Ice Wolves regulation loss, would still have a chance. To win the tiebreaker against New Mexico with 73 points. Colorado behind the Wranglers net. Man centering, nobody home. Magnus Godowski picks it up. Now he charges down the left wing. Gaining the red line. He's bodied off the puck by Freifogel. And now Colorado starts their next attempt. Eric Thompson gains the red line. He'll drop it down deep. Colorado looking to do some dumping. And not a whole lot of chasing, trying to wear the clock down. Now Morris springs up ice. Colorado knocks him off the puck, and Sheldon Rue goes into motion. Nice defensive play by TJ Ritchie on the right wing. You strip Rue of the puck and guide it towards the Wranglers, uh, excuse me, the grit end. 808 and counting, left in regulation. At center ice, picked up by Graves. Pass connects, bouncing towards McDonough, and Phillips on the back check sweeps it out of danger. Another shot in and out of the glove of McDonough, and the Wranglers evade any more danger that time as well. Now on the left wing, Morley Phillips on the four check. Backhands it towards Erickson. Colorado netminder makes a glove save and stops time with 7.47 to go in the third period. This one's far from over. Lots of time left in the third. Wranglers down by two. Colorado leads it four to two, but something tells me we're in for an exciting finish. We'll find out how this one ends when we come back in one minute on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. The way the Wranglers have been playing over the last couple of minutes. Seems that we're seeing, seems like we're poised for a wild finish here at the Budweiser bullpen with the Wranglers trailing four to two on fan appreciation night. So we'd like to say big thank you to all of our fans for supporting us this season. Best fans in the league. We wouldn't have it any other way. Draw on the left circle, one by Colorado. Now Manola Grolnick gains the neutral zone, connects with Landon West on the pass. Kuklidis, nice defensive play. They get in front of the Colorado grit skater, and now the Wranglers charge down the left wing. McDonald finds a trailer. DeMarco towards the slot. Bouncing puck is swept aside by Colorado. Now Manola Grolnick straddles the Wrangler blue line, directs his play towards his right. Gets bumped off the puck by McDonald. Grolnick sprawled out. He's able to slap it back up to the line for West. He'll bang it off the near side boards to the corner for Kruklidis, and the Wranglers will exit. Ben Ivey deking around Thompson, driving towards the goal. Ben gets upended. Fans want a penalty, and they're not going to get it. Meanwhile, Landon West throws a drive towards McDonough. A slow mover had a lot of hang time. Scobbled up by the Wranglers' netminder with 6.59 on the clock in the third period. Tomorrow is the final game of the regular season. 3 p.m. puck drop. We will call it 2.45 pregame show right here on the Wranglers Hockey Network. Keep in mind it's also Margaritaville. End of season party over at the Amarillo Ice Ranch. Go take part, part in that earlier on in the afternoon prior to game time. And after that, the Wranglers are headed to the Robertson Cup playoffs. As the draw to the right of McDonough, Colorado flutters it towards the goal. He's crashing in was Duncan Shin. He scored his first goal in the league against the Wranglers. And McDonough stood tall. 
Now in the neutral zone. Wranglers direct it Colorado's way. But comes returning back to Gerhard. Wranglers with a few passes in the neutral zone look to set up shop in the Colorado. Gerhard chasing after the puck, collects it in the far corner. At the right point, Gagnon has it. He'll throw it across the line for Troutwine towards the goal, and it goes wide. Gagnon pinching, tries to keep it in, but all alone is Chris Graves. Make that Wilder Jacober, and the Grit get it out to center. Wranglers quickly back on their horse. As left side, shot by Gerhard. Twists towards the far side. And again, the puck comes tumbling back out towards the Wrangler end. Six minutes to go in regulation. Nick Troutwine, slap pass towards the left side. Gerhard will direct it down. Colorado almost turns the puck over on an errant pass, but they do keep possession of the puck. As Freifogel, the stick. McNaughton backhand shy. Fought aside by the pads of Erickson. Shot from the left point. Goes wide of the goal. And the Wranglers trying to throw everything they can at Colorado. But the grit again get a clear. And Rainbow the puck back out to center. Wranglers quickly re-enter as McNaughton to Puikin in and his shot in close quarter is stopped by Erickson. Right point, Fuklidis, lefty shot, save made by Erickson, backhand try, centering feed, and Erickson fights that off as well. Now Colorado has numbers the other way. Rue towards his right, he's got Freifogel off the post and out! Wranglers still have a chance as we're under five minutes to go in the third period and the puck somehow stays out of the goal. Loose puck at center ice. Roman zapped the German. Gains possession for the Wranglers and heads towards the bench. The, the electric line out there for Amarillo as Luke Morris leads the charge to the right wing for Godowski. Loses the puck to Peyton Miller. Wranglers get it back at center as Kruklidis blasts it back down towards the far corner of the Colorado end. Colorado ices the puck with 4.11 to go in the third period. There's that line for the Wranglers, that absolute electric factory of Luke Morris, Magnus Godowski, and Morley Phillips. And in the waning moments of the third period, under five minutes to go. I like that move by Austin Center to play that line, to kind of give the rest of the lineup some juice. Because you got to think it's going to be all skill guys and energy guys from here on out. With the Wranglers needing two goals. Here late in the third, draw in the near circle. Morris plays it towards the slot, escapes Godowski. Colorado gets a clear. On the right wing, Landon West will chase after it. He gets to it first. Finds a trailer in Peyton Miller. Now at the right point, Grolnick a shot. McDonough makes the save and directs it towards the far wall. Burke will twist it back behind the Wranglers' netminder. Gagnon will collect it and play it forward, but his pass is intercepted by West. Colorado being pesky here. Troutwine gets his stick slapped out of his hands. He wants a penalty. None is called. And we stay at even strength. 3.36 to go in the third. Man on the right wing. Plays it towards the slot. High slot, that is. Looking for Grolnick. What goes on to the tape of Morley Phillips. He rumbles down the left wing. Bodies a man off the puck. And plays it towards the right corner. McDonald with it. Shot off the outside of the net. Comes back to Jack. Driving towards the near corner. Working against Junker. Behind the net now goes McDonald. On his back end. Turns towards his forehand. Centering pass. Wranglers in the blue paint. And they can't stash it in. As Noah Grolnick skates out to center. And winds it back in. We're under three minutes to go in the third. Colorado being pesky on the forecheck. That's Braden Freifogel trying to weasel the puck away from McRoberts. Colorado hungry to end their 10 game losing streak as time continues to drip off the boards on a puck battle on the near corner of the Wrangler zone. Amarillo doing everything they can to try and wedge it off the boards. No whistle is blown, players get dumped down to the ice. Ben Ivey takes a shot and the Wranglers are gonna go to the power play but not before we've got a fight as Jack McDonald is going toe to toe on the near half wall, and I don't believe McDonald dropped his gloves. No, he didn't. As he was getting pounded by Will Hadrick, McDonald saying, hey, I wasn't trying to fight, as Hadrick got a couple of righties in on McDonald. And Jack McDonald never dropped the gloves. 
So we'll see what transpires out of this, but what we do know is that the Wranglers will get at least one power play. Out of what transpired before the, the uh, I guess you could call it a half fight. As Will Hadrick's night is done, he's directed towards the locker room. Fans cheering. You know, they always like a good scuffle. 228 left in regulation. We saw the Wranglers score a late power play goal by Ben Ivey yesterday. When the game was tied 3-3, you get the Wranglers an edge 4-3 in the victory. Tonight, the power play could also come in clutch in a potential Wrangler comeback. Looks like we've got some talking going over at the visitor's penalty box. That gives Austin Sutter, Wrangler's head coach, a chance to pull out the whiteboard and drop a play. As while we've got time, we'll take a peek at our out-of-town scoreboard and see that the Oklahoma Warriors have done the deed for Amarillo. New Mexico loses in regulation. Wranglers have a chance at home ice. But what it's going to take is at least coming back to tie this game and losing in overtime or winning out in the final two games of the regular season. That includes tonight with a comeback and tomorrow in the final game of the regular season. That is what it's going to take for the play-in to be played in the Texas Panhandle. It's going to be a wild ride to the finish. And look at this. Five minutes on the board to Will Hadrick. Five minutes of power play time. So this means that the Amarillo Wranglers will have the full 228 of regulation on the man advantage. They can score as many times as they want. As it is two for cross-checking, two to McDonald for roughing. The cross-checking goes to Hadrick. And then, of course, the five for fighting and the game is conduct for aggression. That's why you see five on the board to Hadrick. Wranglers will have the full time of regulation on the man advantage to tie up the game. And they can score as many times as they want because it's a five-minute major to Hadrick. A golden opportunity for the boys in blue. Can they capitalize to play the play-in in the Texas Panhandle? The first step is winning tonight. Off the draw, Wranglers win it. Weakening it towards the left point, and the puck leaps over the stick of Jack Ivey. The net is open for the Wranglers. McDonough to the bench. It's a six off situation. Jack Ivey enters. Left point shot wide around the boards. On the right wing, Ben Ivey deking and dangling to his forehand up to the right point for Gagnon. Two minutes to go. Gone on to the half wall for Zap. Gagnon gets it back. Left side, Jack Ivey. Up top, Gagnon. Right wing, Zap. Gagnon again. He'll shoot it. And a glove save by Erickson. Keeps the two goal game with 1.49 to go in the third. Draw will be to the right of Erickson on the near side of the Colorado zone. Your six out there for the Wranglers. Looks like McDonald is actually being escorted off. So it looks like his night is over. And we're going to see why in just a moment. As he gets 10 minute misconduct. For what? I'm, we, we don't know. <laughs> they, have it, they, they just didn't write it down. So, uh, either way, his night is done. Wranglers still in the man advantage. Six on four. Right point, Gagnon. A blast! Comes towards Erickson. Puck loose between the circles. Ben Ivey plays it back up to the line, but a defensive stick by Poirier. Almost chips it out. And a second attempt by Colorado does do so with 1.30 on the clock. Gagnon blasts it around towards the near side. Little jostle for it at the half wall, and Colorado sweeps it down. No icing because they're shorthanded. Wranglers need to hurry. Gagnon gliding through center ice. Drops it off for Jack Ivey. 
He'll gain the center logo. Meander over the blue line. Jack on his back end. Jack to the goal. Save made by Erickson in close quarters. And he gobbles it up with 103 left on the clock. Jack Ivey trying to do it all there. But Jack Erickson wasn't to be fooled. He keeps it out, and it's still a two-goal game. Now it looks like a timeout is called. And it is Amarillo who has called it. Austin Sutter with the timeout wants to give his big guns a chance to rest up for the final minute and three seconds. And all this brings us high drama at the Budweiser bullpen. Here's how we got here. First three goals belong to Colorado, all coming in the first period. First it was Poirier, second it was Graves, third Quinn Bowden. Colorado took a three nothing lead into the second period. Wranglers responded with TJ Ritchie's first in the North American Hockey League, making it a 3-1 game. But then late in the second period, Colorado got another tally, this time from Noah Grolnick, to make it a 4-1 game. In the third period, one goal. It belonged to Roman Zapp. Nice centering feed from Topi Puikinen. And the Wranglers had pulled within two, and that is the story so far. Wranglers out shooting the grit 34-29 at this point, and they have a major power play. I guess a, a major penalty to Colorado is on the board. To Will Hadrick that has given the Wranglers with their net empty a six on four power play to end regulation. If the Wranglers win they're still alive to play playoff hockey. The play in in this building. If they lose we know we're headed to New Mexico next weekend. Off the draw. Jack Ivey, backhand shot towards the goal. Save made by Erickson, and the Wranglers chop it towards the far side wall. Gritter able to pump it back down into the Wranglers, and we're under one minute to go in the third. Ben Ivey leads the charge. The captain down the middle. Drops it off center ice for Zapp. To propel it towards his right for McNaughton. Behind the net, the puck goes. Colorado tries to char it out. Held in at the right point by Gondo. Whips it towards the goal, and it goes wide and up to the left point. Jack Ivey hems it in. Gagnon at the line, to the right circle for Zapp. Now down low, Ben Ivey tries to drive it towards the goal and it's swept aside by the glove of Burke. Wranglers get it back at the line, 20 seconds to go. Jack Ivey, a blast and a pad saved by Erickson. Colorado racing after the puck, the Wranglers keep it in. And now the Grit get it again, they'll sweep it all the way down. And the Wranglers see the time trip off the clock, we're under 10 to go. Gagnon maybe one last chance to the left wing. McNaughton down the boards, drop pass, Jack Ivey, and time is going to expire, and the Wranglers will head to Albuquerque next weekend. And for the first time in the season series, for the first time ever, the Colorado Grit defeat the Amarillo Wranglers in regulation. And it comes tonight at the Budweiser bullpen of four to two. Wranglers post game show starts now. And that's a tough one for the Wranglers. They had things in their grasp. New Mexico losing tonight. All they needed to do was pick up at least a point tonight and then win tomorrow. And the play in would be played in this building. But the Wranglers' loss here tonight means that New Mexico has clinched the fourth seed in the South Division. The Wranglers will finish fifth. And we are headed to Outpost Ice Arenas next weekend. And so now, after weeks of speculation, weeks of wondering, we finally have clarity as to the playoff picture and what the Wranglers will be doing in the play-in round, as it will be the New Mexico Ice Wolves hosting the Amarillo Wranglers next weekend. And here's the reason why. Colorado starts off the game hot just like they did yesterday, although this time they did a good job of keeping their lead as Colorado started off with goals from George Poirier, a tap in from Burke, a carom off the far corner and into the back of the net, gets credited to Chris Graves. And then another tap in goal off a pass from Wilder to Cobra into the back of the net it's Quinn Bowden to make it a 3-0 Colorado lead after one. 
TJ Ritchie gets on the board for the Wranglers with 6.39 to go in the second period to make it a 3-1 hockey game. And it looked like the Wranglers had some life, but Colorado sucked that right out with a goal with 1.28 to go in the second period from Noah Grolnick to restore their three-goal lead. The Wranglers in the third period tried to come back. Roman Zapp gets a goal from Topi Puikinen. Zapp station between the circles. Topi finds Roman. He blasts it behind Erickson for the score to make it 4-2. But unfortunately, that would end up being the final goal of the game in what is a Colorado 4-2 victory as the grit improve to 12-41, 4-2 on the year. They hit the 30-point plateau for the Wranglers. They fall to 31-26-2, 70 points on the season, and they are locked in at the fifth seed in the South Division. New Mexico claims spot number four. For the Wranglers, again, it, it's kind of tough because they didn't do themselves any favors going down by three nothing early in the first or excuse me in the first period in the first frame so i mean it doesn't help to go down by three goals in the opening period as colorado gets the first goal of the game in the opening four minutes and the wranglers not for lack of trying didn't get a goal in the first period but i mean that's been a lot of the theme this season the wranglers haven't been much of a scoring team in the first, and that trend continues tonight. In the second period, though, you get that bright spot from TJ Ritchie, who I think has played some of his best hockey in his NHL career over these last couple of games. He gets rewarded with a well-deserved goal, a shot from the left point that goes up and over the left shoulder of Jack Erickson, who never saw the puck. I mean, he stood frozen uh, like he had just seen a ghost. He didn't see anything because he was staring at the backside of one of his own players, maybe a Wrangler player, as there was a screen out in front of him. DJ Ritchie gets his first goal in the league. It's a nice one at that. So that made it a 3-1 game, and uh, it does end up being a multi-point affair for Roman Zapp, who assisted on the Ritchie goal and then got a goal of his own. So Zapp now leads the club with 14 multi-point games this season. Excuse me, with 15 multi-point games this season. Tonight coming in the form of a goal and an assist. Well, it's a tough one to swallow for the Wranglers, especially against the team that the Wranglers were heavily favored to beat. But, I mean, that kind of just goes with saying that on any given night, you never know who's going to win. Colorado with a lot to prove, despite having only 11 wins on the season coming into play. They were hungry. They wanted it. And quite frankly, from the get-go, it looked like the Grit wanted it more in the first period, despite the Wranglers getting some good scoring chances. And we've seen a lot of times in the season series, the Grit jump out to leads, and the Wranglers just rallying right back to either tie the game or win it. Or I guess late, most uh, throughout to this point, the only one loss came in the shootout in Greeley. And so most of the time the Wranglers had come back to tie the game and win. Well, tonight, not the story. And he, here's, the, here's, the, here's the way I kind of look at it right now is if you're the Wranglers, the ideal thing that you wanted to happen was New Mexico loses, you win out, you sweep this – the season that you sweep this weekend against Colorado and you end the season on a four game win streak and you host the Ice Wolves well now you lose tonight and I think for the Wranglers it, I don't want to say wake up call but I think I think that might be what you can chalk it up as as the Wranglers did do a lot of really good things in this game um I thought some of the themes that crept up and haunted the Wranglers yesterday kind of came with the full effect tonight and it came in full force, and the Wranglers just weren't able to overcome that. And I, I think the Wranglers are learning that while they have been able to do that second period surge thing and score in the third period, they I think they need to be better in the first period. Because you look at yesterday, right, that game was almost lost in the third period. Now, luckily for the Wranglers, they built up momentum, were able to score for the final two periods, and ultimately come back and win. But tonight, you give up three goals in the first period, you don't get anything in the first that's tough, and there's, there are very few teams that can come back and win from a deficit like that. Wranglers are one of them, but tonight not in their favor, and you don't want to do that in a playoff game. And now, knowing that you're going to be on the road for the play in all three games, potentially under one roof, if you're the Wranglers, you have to find a way to start stringing together some good play in the first period. you got to start scoring some goals in the opening frame. you got to be ready to play. And so I say the term wake-up call because I think that brings this issue to light against the last place team in the South Division. So the good news for the Wranglers is is it's not a whole lot of time to you know, rectify that and, uh, and find a remedy. 
Uh, but the good news is, is that you now see that the issue is there and you have a chance to fix it quickly before you, ho for before you play the New Mexico Ice Wolves in the play-in. So it looks like tomorrow is uh, just for funsies, right? Nothing at stake. Wranglers are locked in at five. Colorado has been eliminated. And for Amarillo, it's just going to be a Sunday fun day. And it is the season series finale tomorrow, 3 o'clock Central Time is your puck drop. We'll call it 2.45 pregame show. We'll have it all for you here on the Wranglers Hockey Network. And what is the season finale, the regular season finale, because we still got playoffs, the regular season finale here at the Budweiser bullpen. And there's no guarantees as to if the Wranglers are going to play another game this season in this building. And if they are able to win the play-in, then we will see a playoff game here back at the Budweiser bullpen, but if not, and hopefully not, it's been a good season here at the bullpen, fan appreciation night, and like again, once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to our fans, you know, a lot of them reside here in Amarillo, but for all of you out there in the open space of the world, thank you, thank you for supporting us all season long, thank you for being a part of the posse, and thank you for tuning in this season on the Wranglers Hockey Network as we're far from, from done, don't get me wrong, but on Fan Appreciation right Night, I'd like to take that moment to thank everyone out there for supporting the Wranglers. We deeply do appreciate it. And nights like tonight where we have a great crowd like we did, uh, it just goes to show, Wrangler Nation, you love us, and we love you back. So, tomorrow, the final game of the regular season. Once again, 3 o'clock puck drop. 2.45 pregame show. We'll have it all for you here on the Wranglers Hockey Network. Once again, your final score, Colorado 4, Amarillo 2. Colorado gets their first win in regulation against the Wranglers ever, and they end their season-long 10-game losing streak. I'm Guy Carenza saying good night and so long from the Budweiser bullpen. We'll see you tomorrow for one last time in the regular season.